facility. Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama for NASCAR's Winston Select 500, race number eight on the 1995 NASCAR Tour. It was one week ago, drivers sat poised at the shortest NASCAR track for spring's short track finale. Things happened quickly at Martinsville. The tight quarter saw Greg Sachs make slight contact with pole sitter Bobby Labonte, but it was enough to send him spinning. The short track seemed to always shatter the Winston Cup point standings, and it held true at Martinsville. Points leader Dale Earnhardt hoped to escape his Martinsville bad luck, but this lap five collision between Terry Labonte and Morgan Shepard left Earnhardt wounded, just barely holding on to his points lead. Others scrambled for cover. Right here in front of you, big crash now, right down there in front. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. Hey, what's in front of you? Up here in the middle of the third stretch. All right, you got it, buddy. You're all right. The short track took their toll on the machines. Crumpled sheet metal and broken parts were the order of the day. The effects of the short track season were felt throughout the point standings. Ricky Rudd lost eight positions. Derek Cope fell from fourth to twelfth. John Andretti from thirteenth to nineteenth. And Terry Labonte lost four positions. And Earnhardt's lead has fallen to just eight. Rusty Wallace's good fortune at Martinsville seemed to continue. And when the smoke cleared, Wallace was unscathed. Others advanced during the short track season, including Darrell Waltrip, Bobby Hamilton, Robert Presley, and Ken Schrader. But one's fortunes can change quickly, as Rusty knows all too well. And flips wildly right at the start finish line, very reminiscent of his accident at Daytona. Earnhardt, who usually performs well on the short tracks, was bitten by the spring short track bug this year. And Rusty Wallace, who has suffered on the super speedways, hopes to turn his luck around today at Talladega. Arguably, no driver has had worse luck at Talladega than Rusty Wallace. His only top ten finish in the past five years came two years ago in rather spectacular fashion that you just saw, and that was backwards and ten feet off the ground here. Rusty, why so much frustration at Talladega? I really don't know, Jerry. It's been pretty wild. I've always had a pretty good car, but just had bad luck. I uh, get caught up in wrecks that happen up in front. I feel really good today about my luck here. The car's handling real well. We blew an engine qualifying, and hopefully, uh, because of bad qualifying, we get up to front later on with this better engine. Well, thanks to an 11-year-old Rusty Wallace fan in Hibbing, Minnesota. That could change today. Well, I think so. Katie Kramer sent me a rabbit's foot, and I'm real happy she did. She gave it to General Norman Schwarzkopf. He took it to the war, the Persian Gulf War. He won the war. He took the rabbit's foot, packaged it up, sent it back to the little girl, and said, I'll tell you what, it really worked for me. I want you to have it back, and I appreciate it. I saw the letter and everything. So she sent it to me. She says, Rust, you need some luck at Talladega, and so I want to send this to you. So I've got this rabbit's foot, and I believe it's going to bring me a lot of luck, Katie. So thanks for sending it to me, and I hope it works. And guys, he has led a charmed life on the short track, but this could be just a ticket today to turn his luck around at Talladega. Bob? Thank you very much, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Talladega, where we have a tremendous points battle going on in 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup competition. The top five are separated by only 129, and as you can see, the lead by Dale Earnhardt is just eight over Sterling Marlin, and whoever is in the points lead at the end of today will receive a $100,000 bonus. And there is more money on the line for one Sterling Marlin. Remember he wanted Daytona? He's going for the Winston Million. For more on that, here is John Kernan. Well, Bob, if Sterling wins today and leads the most laps, he'll take over the points lead, and he would collect that $100,000 bonus from RJR. Also, the second leg of the Winston Million. If he can come up with the victory here today, he would pocket another $100,000, throw in what the race purse is, and you're looking at more than $300,000. A very big payday indeed for Sterling Marlin. But this team has had some bad luck as of late. Three crew members have been hurt over the past couple of weeks. Engine builder Rutt Pittman almost drowned in a boating accident a couple of weeks ago. The Jackman, Robert Larkins, last week at Martinsville, working on the car around the battery cable, shorted it out on his ring finger. Got a bad burn there, but he is all right. On Wednesday night, back home in Abington, team owner Larry McClure in an automobile accident broke his left arm. Larry 
is out of the hospital now, and he is back at home watching today. Now, the one positive thing that all the crew members tell me have come out of this, Vinny and Ned, is the fact that bad luck always comes in threes, so they expect to have good luck today. And folks, as dominant as that four car was in Daytona, Ned, he's not running on the same racetrack here, Taylor. No, it's totally different racetrack. Even though there isn't that much difference in the size of the track, the banking is two more degrees here. The turns are a lot wider, and it takes a different setup under the race car here. Drafting, of course, plays a big, big role here, and accidents can play a big role as well because you very seldom see one car accidents here. We're going to see cars side by side, three abreast, sometimes five abreast at Talladega. The entry in the corner, exit the corner. It's so smooth getting in and getting off these corners. That's just a different racetrack than Daytona. Totally different, and it's fast. For more on speed, let's go to the pit road and Bill Weber. Well, Ned, there have been 51 Winston Cup races here at Talladega. 25 times the winner has come from the front row. 10 times the winner has come from the pole. On the pole today, for the first time in 109 races, Terry Labonte in the Kellogg Chevrolet qualifying at over 196.5 miles an hour. But that team had to change motors this morning. They were unhappy with their performance in final practice. They put in the same motor they qualified on. Outside the front row is Loy Allen, making a return to Winston Cup race and a return to TriStar Motorsports. Loy has flexed his super speedway strength in qualifying in the past, but has seldom been a factor at the finish. The first of a limited three-race deal between Loy and TriStar is today. But here's one of the favorites for the race, Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet. A fast car, a factor at Daytona. However, the car fell off the jack during a pit stop, and that took Jeff out of contention. The last three races, all on short tracks, a first, a second, and a third place finish. Today, back to the Super Speedway and a lot of incentive for this young man. He's only 70 points behind Dale Earnhardt in the chase for the Winston Cup Championship. Bob, there's a lot on the line and a lot at the finish line here at Talladega today. But one of the major concerns is weather. The temperature is 73 and skies are listed as partly cloudy. The weather man says there could be some rain later this afternoon. Let's hope it is much later this afternoon and we can get all of this Winston Select 500 in for you. The warm-up lap coming through the trioval here. Talladega Super Speedway is 2.66 miles in length. The front stretch is 4,300 feet. The back stretch is 4,000. The corners are banked at 33 degrees. The front stretch at 18 and the back stretch is at 2 degrees. Our race analysis shows that the pole speed was 196.5. The record for the race, 186.2. They'll have to pit between laps 40 and 45 for fuel, and they're going for a purse in excess of $1.3 million here this afternoon. The starting lineup, Terry Labonte, for the first time since Watkins Glen in 1991, has the pole position of the Kellogg's Cornflake Chevy car number five. Loy Allen is outside row number one, exactly where he started in this race last year. Second row, Mark Martin in the Valvoline Ford number six, and Bobby Labonte, last week's pole center of the Interstate Battery Chevy number 18. Dale Jarrett has the fifth starting position, alongside Jeff Gordon in the DuPont refinishes Chevy. The fourth row, Sterling Marlin from Columbia, Tennessee in car number four and Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin's Dick Trickle, car number 15 will start in eighth position. As you take a look at the rest of the starting lineup, the cars come down off that banking, head down the back stretch, and the light atop the pace car is out. We will hopefully get a green this time around. 500 miles of Talladega, nose to tail, bumper to bumper. I'm telling you, when the, when the day is over, they will not be physically tired but they will be exhausted from just the mental strain of sitting there on someone's bumper at 195 miles per hour. Especially here at Talladega, the pictures and the sounds are so exciting. So if we set out for a couple of laps and just watch the TV with you, why, uh, everybody will be happy. Yeah, I'll be very happy. <laughs> Because I am a great race fan, and this is a great place to watch a race. Oh, it's uh, close together and a lot of passing. Now, for the fans that might be wondering what that, uh, if they don't understand what the seconds are down there, that's the amount of time that they were slower than the pole setter, Terry Labonte. You can see Get clear back, back to row 18, Dave Marcus was only just a tick over a second slower. Now we arrive at the provisional starters, including Jeff Bodine and Ward Burton on the last row. That's the starting grid for the Winston Select 500. There is Sterling Marlin getting set to go. There's Steve Grissom, Ted Musgrave, Mark Martin will have the roof cam again. Ken Schrader will also have a roof cam. 
and Dick Trickle will also have an in-car camera. Well, here we go. The Winston Select 500 at Talladega Super Speedway is about to get the green flag for 500 miles, 188 laps of racing. Here they come, and the green is out.
Michael Waltrip trying to get by Robert Presser. That's marked in the six car. Michael Waltrip in the yellow 30. Dale Jarrett back behind them in the black and red 28 car. Everybody just trying to find a spot that'll work for them. Ooh. Jimmy Spencer moves up right in front of Randy LaJoy. The first four remain the same with Roy Allen leading this race. Sterling Marlin slides into fifth. This is where the good racing is, though. This is back for about 10 on back. Rusty Wallace is buried somewhere. There he is, running along alongside Jeff Purvis in 44, behind Kyle Petty in front of Greg Sachs, as Ricky Craven runs the low line through the corner. There we see Jeff Bodine, the exit battery car, number seven. An engine change this morning. He started getting last. He's moved up about five spots. It's a four-car breakaway up front, led by Loy Allen, with Le 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 the Labonte brothers running second and third. Jeff Gordon is fourth, and Sterling Marlin runs in fifth position at the end of seven of 188 laps at Talladega. ESPN Speed World at Talladega for the Winston Select 500. When we went to break, just about three or four laps to go, it was a four-car breakaway. But now look at it. Everybody is nose to tail and side by side. Loy Allen continues to lead, but Jeff Gordon has moved to second. Bobby Labonte third. Then comes Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, and then Terry Labonte. Michael Walter, but look, Jimmy Spencer has moved up to the top ten in eighth spot. Goes by Bobby Labonte on the outside. Now, Labonte going to get hung on the inside. Yeah, I think that outside is still the best groove here today. It's the fastest groove. Dale Earnhardt started 16th and began the march to the front quickly. He had gained two positions just in one lap, and now he is third. Is he going to follow forward? He knows that outside groove is perhaps the fastest. And they might just be able to blow right on by Jeff Gordon. Yeah, they is he strong enough to do it by himself? Bobby Lamonte so. got hung out to dry there a couple laps ago, Ned. He went back several positions, and Jeff Gordon stands to do the same thing. Look at everybody go around him. Yep. They look like they're 10 miles an hour faster than Jeff Gordon right now, and they might be. Yeah, they, they probably are. Dale Jarrett tried to do it a while ago, and he got hung down there and see where he is back there in the back. So Jeff finally gets him a place to get in. He passed, fell into eighth position after battling for the lead. Earnhardt up to second place. Dale Earnhardt, the defending champion of the Winston Select 500 as we ride with Ken Schrader. Now, these are two cars owned by Rick Hendrick out of Hendrick Motorsports. Maybe they'll get hooked up and try to go to the front as Mark Martin tries it on the inside. Now, Mark, uh, nobody went with him. Let's see, will Sterling go with him? Let's see. Yes, Sterling comes down there with him. Well, we may see the Fords ganging up here on the uh, Dale Earnhardt. Well, that's the Ford and Hart Martin and the Chevrolet of Sterling Marlin, so I don't know. Well, Sterling just moved back up behind the Chevrolet, yep. Yep. and now Mark Martin is hung out to drive. I think I think Mark was hoping that the 19 car, the Ford, there would pull down in front of him and help him, but so far that hasn't happened. Lombardi's still down on the inside back there. He's back to about 20 feet right now. He cannot get back to the outside. And Jimmy Spencer, he's making a move down there. Now, he sees Mark Martin up there. He said, if I can get to him, uh, he and I can go back up towards the front. Dale Jarrett might try that move and try to help them a little bit. Steve Grissom in car number 29. He had to take a provisional to get into the lineup. And Earnhardt goes to the bottom, trying, and he leads that lap. He's got the five bonus points, but now then, is anybody going to go with him? I don't think so. <laughs> but he's 
going to try to squeeze between Marlin and Labonte. Well, he runs alongside Sterling. And right now, there's no place to squeeze in there. And we see Bobby Labonte. He's still on the inside. As Earnhardt drops back on the lead, he's now running a fifth. Now here comes Martin Martin. Maybe he and Earnhardt can get hooked up and go to the front. Mark Martin, the number six car, the blue and white down the Ford. Boy, Jimmy Spencer is doing a great job. He's right behind Mark Martin. The frustration that Jimmy Spencer has had this season may be all coming out today. He started 19th, and he's up to 7th at the end of 13 laps. And Earnhardt has gotten back in line. He's left Mark Martin on the inside. But here goes comes Spencer in the 23 car. Maybe they can get Riding on Dick Triple's quality care for behind Robert Presley and beside Jimmy. Now that car was fast yesterday in practice. Dick Triple has a Robert Yates engine in his quality care forward, and he was really fast out here yesterday afternoon. He felt good about this race today. The two Robert Yates cars, two Robert Yates engines running out together, Dick Triple and Dale Jarrett. They teamed up together there yesterday to get some practice being in Randall. 98 miles an hour, but they can't do that now because they're back in that pack. And Sterling Marlin will go for the front into turn one, running right beside Loy Allen, who has led the first 16 laps. Loy Allen has Earnhardt, and Earnhardt on the outside. Jeff Gordon, he's trying to figure out which one of these guys do I help well, my teammate Jerry Lamont, or do I fall in behind Earnhardt? He's still trying to figure it out. He wants to go with the Chevrolets, if that will work. These are the most laps ever led by Loy Allen in one race. He still has it headed for the completion of lap number 17. And now Terry Labonte has dropped down low. And he has some help. Jeff Gordon is there now. Labonte goes back up in the high group. Leave Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, and Dale Jarrett down there on the inside. Now some other cars are moving down there. And we got three wide again into the first turn. Ken Schrader right in the middle of them. And he's going to find a hole to get in. He does. And the lead, sir. Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte on the outside. Looks like he's hooked up between Jeff Gordon. Trying to break the draft, get away from those cars up there a little bit to break that air cushion a little bit there to maybe give him a little bit of an advantage. Now we've got four Fords on the inside and four, three Chevrolets and a Pontiac on the outside. Boy, that was probably the car was feeling a little bit light as close as he was running to those cars coming off the turn. They take a little air off those coming off those turns. So Run down to the inside of the back stretch the last time just to give himself a little bit of stable air. Terry Labonte, the leader now, with two by two behind him. Four boards on the inside. Make that five. Yeah. Jeff Burton started near the end of the pack, started where Bob? 37. 37th, and he's worked his way up right to the lead draft. Dale Jarrett dropped back there from Mark Martin. They've gone to the front again with Mark Martin and the car number 19 of Roy Allen. Well, you've got to be impressed with the performance that Roy Allen is putting on here today. He dropped out of the lead, and now he has put himself right back in it. to the inside of Loy Allen and temporarily gets the lead out of corner number two. Well, he had himself a good run there with no help from the rear. Long way back to Dale Jarrett, the next car on the inside. But now you can see that they hit the straightaway that uh, is telling on him. They go by him on the outside. Those cars hook up when they run nose to tail. There's just no car on the inside by himself that can keep up. Mark Martin was leading the race. Now Loy Allen moves over and lets Mark Martin get some air off his car. Maybe that will help Mark. That should uh, maybe suck him on by. Meanwhile, the two Henry cars, the 5 and the 24, Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon trying to hook up and go back to the front. Now Earnhardt.
Gerhard and Scott down there and brushed up those forwards down in the, the inside. He said, hey, they look like they might have something going here. I want to be a part of it. Well, the last lap was 193.86 miles an hour, and the separation from Roy Allen in the lead to the very last car is three and a half seconds. And Mark Martin finally takes the lead, moves back up in front of Roy Allen, but here comes Earnhardt on the inside. There's a gap for him. And Dale Jarrett. John Kernan has more on the excellent run so far by Roy Allen. Well, Roy Allen caught up on the high side now. He's dropped back to the lead to about fifth spot this morning. Tell me the car felt very comfortable in the draft. His main concern was his lack of experience with these guys. He says they still probably didn't trust him enough to draft with him all day long. He thought that would be one of his problems, having a dancing partner. Now let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. And I'm standing there, Chris John and Mark Smith, who owns this car, told me that Lloyd said this car would go anywhere he wants to point it on the racetrack. The car is handling absolutely perfectly. It's the same car. They said on the pole for the Daytona 500 last year. They said on the outside front row here last May. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, Jeff Burton is the defending Max Race Cards Rookie of the Year. They're Meyer 31st in points, but I just talked to Donnie Richardson. He said Jeff isn't saying much. Actually, Donnie's the real driver at this point. He's coaching Jeff around the track. This is a brand-new race car. They struggled here all weekend, qualified deep in the field. But Donnie said hang on because Jeff Burton is making his move to the front. Boy, well, that he, is an amazing Yeah, run. it is. He isn't doing any talking because he's very busy driving the race car. Started 37th, has moved up to fourth position here at the end of 21 laps. Jeff Burton, car eight. He was swinging getting into this race. Huh? That is amazing. And right behind him then is Todd Bodine, who started 12th and has moved up to 5th. And look at uh, Burton. He's going to try to, on the high side there, get Todd Bodine to go with him. Let's see if he can make that work. He's done something right coming up through there. been all green so far at Talladega. The first 23 laps out front is Mark Martin, followed by Dale Earnhardt. We'll be right back. Talladega, where Mark Martin continues to lead. He's got him stacked up behind him. Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton. There's our outside folks and the out who led. 18, 20 laps this race to begin with. He's hung on the inside now, and there's no gap for Loy Allen to get back in. There's Here's Bobby Labonte, who started fourth. Now back in 19th, in 15th spot. Sorry, Bobby. You know, the entire field is still basically in the lead draft, draft except in Dave Martins. Dave has uh, dropped off. He's running about two-thirds of a lap behind the leaders. So 41 cars are running in the drafting line. And here is Dale Earnhardt taking the lead for Mark Martin. Dale Jarrett comes along to second. And now the battle for third between Jeff Martin and Mark Martin. And the crowd is going crazy. Oh, Todd Bodine moved right in front of Jeff Gordon. He said, thank you, Lord, or Jeff or whoever. <laughs> or both. All or together, both. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Michael Walker trying to get by Jeff Gordon. The Pinto a car on the inside. No one to go with. Will Jeff let him in? No. Nope. nope. That's the battle for six spot. Waltrip and Jeff Gordon. And coming up on Sterling Marlin is the 15 of Dick Trickle. Well, those things look mean when they come up there on that camera, don't they? <laughs> they do. And that's looking out of the 15 car up to Sterling Marlin. Still Michael Walker, the Pendrel car hung on the inside. Not able to get back. Ooh, Sterling, he thought about trying to fit in that hole. Sterling said, uh-uh. To Kenny Schrader right in front of Sterling Marlin. Or Schrader, the blood wiser car. Uh-oh, Michael caught down there. He's going to be hurting. John Kernan has a report on Sterling Marlin. Well, with pit stops coming up in less than 20 laps, Sterling Marlin has called in and complained that his car has gotten loose. Now, the, a lot of the cloud cover is starting to lift, and the sun has come out, so it might be heating up the track surface a little bit. That could be the problem. But look for them to pit between lap 40, 45, and come in and make an adjustment. And Dale Jarrett has taken the lead with a little bit of help on the bottom side from Mark Martin. And the, also a big roar comes up from the crowd as Dale takes the lead from Dale Earnhardt. Well, 
gets to start finish line to be the first race he's led first lap he has led this year i and believe he's gonna do it oh yeah he's gonna do it and this crowd in talladega alabama Great partisan towards that yeah. 28 car. Remember, they remember. The, the heritage of the car. That's and, right. And the Allison's ride in it. We're with Mark Martin looking over to Dale Earnhardt. Battle for second. I'm surprised Earnhardt don't look over and grin at us. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a high sign or something. Huh? From the Family Channel blimp high above, you can see how close they are. Jimmy Spencer there running beside Sterling Martin on the bottom side. Jimmy Spencer is trying his dead level best to get to the front. Now Jerry drops down to the inside, gives Mark Martin a little bit of a pull there, pulls him right on by. Dale Earnhardt helping his Ford buddies out there a little bit. Here comes Todd Bodine. Uh oh, Bodine had contact with Ken Schrader and almost lost it. Yeah, that was another close call. Jeff Burton, the Rebestus car. Good run for Jeff Burton. Todd Bodine. There we see Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton, Todd Bodine. You know, that's about three teams that really haven't had a lot to yell about this year. They've got to be feel good to be up near the front. And Todd Bodine and Jeff Burton off the pack. Yeah, those cars seem to be working good together. Every once in a while, you'll find a couple cars, not necessarily two Fords. It can be a Ford and a Chevrolet or a Ford and a Pioneer, whatever. But sometimes two cars just seem to get together and hook up and run good together, and those two seem to be doing that. Watch this uh, contact between Todd Bodine and the 25 right there. Man, oh, man. Oof. Talk about a big wreck. Now, that would have been a big yes, wreck. It really would have been. And again, this was at speeds in excess of 193. Last lap was 193.8. We'll see Jeff Burton. Looks like he's hung on the inside. That is Burton back about 12th, isn't it? Looks like it. Behind Greg Sachs says, there's the Waltrip brothers, Daryl Waltrip and Michael. Teaming up to go by Jimmy Spencer. Ooh, Ooh, Earnhardt, Todd and Bodine. Todd Bodine, boy, he's got to feel like a talent board out there. Yeah. Now the Chevrolet's have hung up, uh, ganged up on the inside, trying to get by Todd Bodine. And there goes the Pontiac and Michael Waltrip down there also. And Jimmy Spencer moves up on the outside. Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin was hoping that they'd keep racing side by side back there. They had opened up a little bit of a gap, but that'll go away in a hurry as Earnhardt and Ken Schrader now have singled themselves out out there. And you can see that Earnhardt is mowing that distance down. And Ken Schrader has had a good first 31 laps coming from 20th to 4th. Look at Spencer. Boy, he got a run. Car 23. Down on the inside of Michael Walter. And there's Daryl Walter. But you know, folks, I went down to Roger area on Friday and Daryl came up. What do you mean I hit the 18th? I didn't hit the 18th. Daryl, I thought you hit the 18th. I'm sorry, but folks, Daryl said you did not hit the 18th on Knoxville, and I got to believe it. It's tough to make a call on who did what to whom when you're up here on the broadcast booth and not down there with the drivers. He called me Ben, and when he says Ben, I know, <laughs> you know you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Ken Schrader to third below Mark Martin. He's got some drafting help from Jeff Gordon. And those Chevrolets have teamed up on those boards. And they got one of them. Got him back to fifth place now. And they're going to work on the other one there. Got a Ford leading, though. It's Dale Jarrett. Now, this is what NASCAR envisions. You know, a Ford, Chevrolet, 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 Ford. And they're going to Pontiac get in there. They'd like to have these three makes of cars running just like this at every racetrack all year long. Jared leading Dale Earnhardt. Ken Schrader running in third spot. Jeff Gordon is fourth, and Mark Martin is fifth. 32 laps in the Winston Select 500. Back in a moment. Five laps into the Winston Select 500, and here's the Auto Life Field summary. We're riding with the second place car of Ken Schrader. Just ahead of him is the leader, Dale Jarrett. And Kenny took a look to the inside, but decided to fall back in line as they went into turn number one. As you see the Auto Life Field summary, all these cars on the lead lap and 40 cars are in the draft. Elton Sawyer forward are all 
basically in the lead draft. Okay, here comes Schrader trying to make a move down on the inside. He has Jeff Gordon, his teammate, working with him. And they blow right on by. Schrader does. Here comes the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. He'll take over the second place. Now Spencer moves up. He says, I think I'll, uh, okay, I'll follow behind her. And look at Darrell Walter. Oh, wow. DW, awful racing. Coming up right on the inside, which is a trademark of his. He loves to run on the inside, Darrell Walter. Jerry Punch has more on Jimmy Spencer. After struggling for much of the 1995 season, Spencer having a great run today, but they have borrowed an engine from Jack Roush Racing. Roush has five engines in the race. His two cars, Musgrave and Martin, along with the 21 car of Shepard, Spencer, and Kenny Wallace. And Spencer running awfully well, even not running the two Roush cars right now, Bob. Spencer doing a great job out there. We focus in on led by Mark Martin looking back on Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt. I get the impression that maybe Earnhardt's chassis not exactly right right now because he's backed up four or five spots in the last few laps. He was running second not too long ago and Schrader got by and then uh, several others. It's still Ken Schrader leading over Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Darrell Waldrop, Jimmy Spencer, and then comes Martin. I tell you what, we are going to see something here in just a minute. If we, if it, we can go green for about another 10 laps, we're going to see all these cars make pit stops. And you talk about some pumped up pit crews. They are going to be pumped. You're going to see pit stops like you ain't never seen before. And boy, they will be so important because the second lost in the pits is what, a couple hundred feet out here on the racetrack. About 300 feet as a matter of fact. Body trying to slide up in front of Todd Bodine. On the bottom is Robert Presley along with Greg Sachs. Dave Marcus has been lapped, so there are now 41 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, Dave was yeah, sitting out there by himself. Whatever the reason was that he lost the draft sitting out there by himself. And it was just a matter of time that they'd run him down on this draft and put him a lap down. The 26 car of Hut Strickland. There he is, right in front of Terry Labonte, right behind the four car of Sterling Marlin. There he is, qualified 17th, Benny, and he's running 10th. Right, great run for Hut. Alabama veteran. Well, we have about nine laps unofficially till we get to the pit stops, and we want to make sure that we show you all of those. We'll take a break here and be back with more live coverage from Talladega Super Speedway. Welcome back to Talladega, where the race continues under green, and Sunday Night Baseball tonight makes a stop at the Kingdom in Seattle. Cecil Fielder, the Tigers, against home run threat Ken Griffey Jr. and the Mariners, 7.56 tonight. Set your watches on ESPN. It is still Ken Schrader leading Jeff, Jeff Gordon. Gordon second. See, Dale Jarrett is third. Darrell Walter is fourth, and Jimmy Spencer is fifth. Now they're back three abreast. Robert Preston in the 33 car. Michael Walter in 30. That's Greg Sachs the 40. Back off, Robert. Yeah, boy, Robert, <laughs> good job. Yes, sir. Uh oh, oh here he's comes Robert back. back up in there. Here comes Kyle Petty, the 42 car, and John Andretti in the white 37. The Kmart. Little wow, here. look at that move that Kyle made. Wow. And Andretti went with him. He just cut across there. He knew he had the opening. <laughs> he turned left at 190. He sure did. I thought there was a sign that said no left turns. <laughs> that could be almost anybody. Yeah. Talk about the importance of spotting. They're all around. They're all around. They're all around. They're all around. Get that, brother. They're all around. Morgan Shepard to sit go forward. They're all around. They're all around. Did you say clear all yeah. around or yeah. they're all around? No, he said clear all around. Okay. Yeah. But there are cars all around. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Jerry, what's the strategy regarding pit stops, which should be coming up? 
Well, they're discussing it here in the Ken Schrader Budweiser pits. Rick Henry just came running down pit road and grabbed Ken Howes. They're trying to coordinate the pit stops among the Hendrick teams. We are being told that Schrader would come in on lap 49. They have told Ray Everham that they want to bring the 24 car in on lap 49. And they've also even gone next door to a Ford team. Morgan Shepard has said, if you come in at the same time, we'll all draft back to the front in a hurry. We'll check out pit road with John Kernan. Well, Jerry, Tony Glover tried to talk Ray Everham and that crew into getting on lap 47. The word we get from Tony Sterling getting lap 47. They will make a chassis adjustment to tighten that car up. Let's go down to Bill Weber. Well, down here, Buddy Parrott has been running around in the Meineke Steve Grissom pit looking for a partner. Their plan is to try and get in here a little bit early. They didn't want to come in alone. They're they wanted to around. follow They're out the outside. field. So now it is the 29 car and the 27 looking to pit early here and try and gain an advantage. Well, if they pit on lap 47, they'll be doing so in a lap and a half because we're on lap 46 right now. Look at the telemetry. 199 at the end of the straightaway. That's how many miles per hour he'll drop in the corner as he goes in 187. That's 12 miles an hour. And it just stays there. Yeah, he'll start accelerating as he comes off that corner. Watch as he builds back up. Folks, some car coming in the pit. The Michael Walker. Michael Walter, the first to break away and come in for a pit stop in the Pennzoil Pontiac. Steve, next stop by. Next. Steve Grissom, next time by the toe pit. 65 miles an hour is the speed limit on pit road today. Okay, guys, you need a great pit stop right now. They know that, though. We understand that the four and the six are going to team up for pit stops. Right sides only, right sides, and they're taking some tape or putting some tape on the left front. I could tell, if we, I think they were putting tape on. That'll make the car just a little bit faster. Loosen it up just a little bit. Let's see who comes in this time, if anyone. Doesn't look like that anybody, well, somebody has slowed down, but the, those running up front are staying out there. Schrader coming down and completing another lap. That was Kenny Wallace that broke off and came in. There he is getting service. And again, I think they only replaced the right sides. They did and made a chassis adjustment to the left rear. Here's Bill. Steve Grissom is on pit road. The plan was to come in early. They're going to change two right side tires. They've got the fuel in, working on the right side, cleaning off the grill. The Meineke Chevrolet down and away. Nice catch by the gas man. A tire gets away. Right behind him, Elton Sawyer. And the Hooters Ford is in. They're going to the right side also, cleaning the windshield, dumping in the Unical fuel. Elton guns the engine. 65 miles an hour is the maximum on pit road. About 4,200 RPM. With this long of a drive down pit road, you can be very careful that you don't burn a pit. Elton is away. Several are coming in, Bill. Several coming in, but the first five remain on the race track. But here comes a whole gaggle of cars down pit road, led by Mark Martin. Looks like the caution flag is out. John Kernan. Sterling Martin is in. Two tires. Right sides only. And fuel to help to make a chassis adjustment. They plan to take tape off the grill and also on the left side around the wedge out as they are in as they try to tighten that car up. Robert Presley is also in for a two-tire change. Right side, they're having a little problem with the right rear tire on Robert Presley. Now let's go to Bill Weber as Sterling Martin leads. Right side tires for the Ray Bestis Ford. Jeff Burton is away. They got the fuel in. Also two tires for Jeff Bodine. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. And they are waiting on Kenny Schrader at the far end of pit road. And finally, Schrader making his way down at 65 miles per hour. You know, Rick Hendrick came down and told the crew, guys, you're leading the race. This one is for Papa Joe. Papa Joe Hendrick listed as the owner of the Budweiser Chevrolet. He is back in Charlotte. We are told he's having heart trouble, and they want to win this one very badly for him. Let's go back to John Kernan. Jeff Gordon overshoots his pit. They have to back it up. That's going to cost him valuable time here on pit road. No chassis adjustment. They will put on right side tires, take on fuel. Now let's go down to Jerry Potts with Schrader. Tires for Schrader. Frank Edwards puts one round of bite. Schrader complaining of the car being slightly loose. They change the right side tire. He is down, and Earnhardt's car stalls momentarily. Now he is down as Jeff Gordon heads back down pit road. Here is Darrell Walter and Dale Earnhardt as they work continues in the pits on the course Light Pontiac of Kyle Petty. A very busy pit road, and some of the cars had to take evasive action and go to the grass when they were coming in. They're moving out single file. Dale Jarrett had taken over the lead. He went an extra lap. He's coming into the pits right now. There he is coming down pit road to the attention of his pit crew. Jerry, are you there? 
We are in the Texaco Haviland Pits of Dale Jarrett, the same car that led the most laps in these races at Talladega, both races a year ago. Ernie Irvin driving at the time did not win either race, but led a lot of laps. Dale Jarrett hoping to take that car to victory lane today. Right side tires only, they top it off with fuel. He is down and away. Let's go up pit road. With Jerry, some bad news for Sterling Marlin fans. At least that's the way it appears right now. I just talked to his crew chief, Tony Glover. He tells me they have lost the cylinder. What they're hoping, it's just a plug wire is off and that they can get a caution and get the car in and be able to open the hood and check and make sure that all the plug wires are tight. Let's go back down to Dr. Punch. Well, they are checking in the 28 crew to see if they might have gotten the car full of fuel. They think they got the car full of fuel. They're still trying to determine. They'll have to weigh the gas cans and find out. Hopefully, they got the car top off. If not, it could be a very costly mistake. I don't know, Dad. It only took him 12.1 seconds for that pit stop, and I was wondering that when he pulled out. Yeah, I can't imagine that they would have gotten the car full of fuel in just 12 seconds. Norman Kishinushu, Kashinushu is the gas man on that car. He's very good, but I don't know if he got that thing full in 12 seconds. Here comes Mark Martin along with Jeff Gordon. And Jarrett will fall in behind them. And this should be for the lead now. Mark Martin should be leading the race. Unless we have somebody that hasn't pitted. Yeah, I believe that, uh, that Mark is the leader. They're the first three. Running back in fourth would be Schrader, then Darrell Walter. Jerry, what's the deal on the 28? Did he get get it full of fuel? I just spoke with Norman Coates of the, the, the gas man. He said, yes, they got it full of fuel. He was putting gas in it and watching him. Gas began, began to come out the overflow, so it had to be full of fuel. So they pulled the can out, dropped the jack, and were away. Norman, you the man. Yeah, I was going to say, you did a heck of a job if you got that thing full of fuel. So the first set of pit stops have been completed, and it is Mark Martin along with Jeff Gordon running in third place is Dale Jarrett. Back in a moment. Field summary for you. Mark Martin is the leader of the race. We're riding with him, looking back on second place, Jeff Gordon. 54 laps have been completed, and the average speed is 190.332. We have been green all the way, and the last lap was 194.8. Wow. We're averaging 190, even with that pitch stop. Yep, 190.4. Wow. They are moving on. Now, Dale Jarrett had lost the draft of Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon, but then Ken Schrader came along, Darrell Walker, they picked it right up, and now they have come up, picked up the leaders. Clear high. Only one car lap down, Dave Marcus. Listening to Ted Musgrave spot her. Well, Kenny Wallace just went a lap down a few laps ago. see the family channel car bill elliott right behind bill elliott that's jerry cope on the outside of elliott elliott's in the red car number 94. there he is mcdonald's still there still there he's going no place he said by the way bill elliott is carrying in the car Hi, today a badge number of a police officer who was uh, killed in the line of duty today and in Vermin in Montgomery, uh -huh, Alabama. Alabama, yep. Well, they're still running in huge packs, and here's the biggest one. Now, Sterling Marlin was out of this pack just a moment ago, but as Jerry Poncher, one of our reporters, reported, he evidently is on 7 cylinders because he is slowly dropping back. Now, this is about from 11th back through 20 some, <laughs> probably 25 or something. Jeff Bodine has made a pretty good march toward the front. He started in 41st position, took a provisional, moved up to 34th by lap 26, and now at the end of 55 laps is in 14th. That's the two Bodine brothers, Jeff in the 7, Todd in the 75. Right behind the 75, you'll find the two car of Rusty Wallace. Yeah, but not a good pit stop and picked up a lot of positions. Not really for that team, though. It's up to 19th. See John Andretti behind Jerry Cole. Yeah, 
Ed Musgrave finished a very close second last week. Dale Earnhardt moves alongside Ken Schrader. Merrill Walter just passed Schrader in turns one and two. Now Earnhardt coming by down on the inside. See Darrell up there in fourth place. Four cars up there ahead of him. Once again, we got a report that Chris made a chassis adjustment on that pit stop. Could it be that the car is getting loose once again? Those guys don't want to run side to side too long back there. Forcing to get away from him if they're careful. Ricky Rudd has moved into the mix here, running behind Earnhardt, alongside Schrader. He must have had an awfully good pit stop here because he was uh, pretty far back in the pack before that round of pit stops. He needs to run hard and get some of that $50,000 back. Right. It's fine here in the drivers. So those see Robert Preston with 33 cars. For those of you who, wasn't, uh, who weren't watching NASCAR today, our half-hour free race, and don't know about it, uh, Rudd was fined $50,000, the team was, for having an illegal hydraulic <laughs> in the car to raise and lower the back of it. You know, Charlie Presser, the crew chief, Robert's brother, evidently had a great pit stop because there Robert is running the mix of things. There are the first four being led by Mark Martin. And you can see the distance there. Dale Earnhardt running in fifth place when he and Schrader were running side by side for a lap or two. How much of a distance those four cars have really opened up? Now, can they team up in a draft together and, and run that force them down? The question is, can they be patient enough to stay <laughs> behind each other and draft up to the... Well, when you're sitting there running, uh, say, in Schrader's place, you think, my car's faster than his. I can lead us faster. I can get us up there quicker. But you get in front, maybe it don't go fast. Of course, the, the crewmen are always talking to the car and saying, hey, you're running faster with this car in front than you are with the other car. So sometimes you don't know that until you try. Almost a third of the race is completed already. And we don't want to jinx anybody here, but the record for fewest cautions in a Winston Select 502 in 1985, we've gone all the way so far under green. Let's hope we can continue that effort. Earnhardt and that crew are catching the front foursome. They've lined up together, doing a good job of drafting there. And, uh, reeling them in. The closer they get, the more they're being each lap. And Darrell Waltrip has fallen back a few yeah. car lengths, so that will help Earnhardt. Yep, they can pick up that draft a little bit quicker. Darrell Waltrip ran his first NASCAR Winston Cup race here on May 7th of 1972. And Jerry Punch has more on Kent Schrader. We saw Kenny Schrader make a move toward the front prior to that pit stop. They came in and Kenny had said the car had gotten very loose. They put two rock side tires and put about a round and a half of bite in the car. And now Kenny says the car has gotten tight. He's having trouble getting the car turned. That's why he has dropped back a little bit. Hopefully the track will come to him and the car will loosen up for the next 15 or so laps. He can begin to make a charge back toward the front. Bob, looks like they hung Darrell Waltrip out to dry as everybody forms a line to the bottom. Yep, they just drive right on by down on the inside as they now, Darrell moves in the middle of that pack, right between Robert Presley and Terry Labonte. That exchange didn't cost him any distance, I don't believe. Earnhardt seems to still be about the same distance behind the third-place car of Dale Jarrett. It is still Mark Martin leading 63 laps into the 188 lap. Winston Select 500 from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. We'll be right back here at Talladega on the 67th lap. The accident here in the tri-oval. I didn't see it start, but I did see him hit the wall nearly head-on right in the tri-oval. And he is moving around in the cockpit, and that's the most important. John Andretti was involved in it as well, Bob. You see his car going around with damage to the right front. The accident started as they exited turn four. Here it is. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened to Derek Cope in the straight arrow car. Here he comes off the corner, and he and John Andretti make contact. Fuck, Derek maybe tried to go up a little bit and didn't realize that Andretti was up there. They made contact. A lot of cars right there running close together. 
It's a miracle that more were not involved. Now watch this. As Cope looks like he's going for the infield, but now the car veers, makes a right-hand turn. Watch. Not anything you can do about it. Almost Man. head on. Oh. Man. He is out of the car, however, and it appears as if he is okay. Boy, that is good news. Derek Cope came into this race 12th in the point standings. Here it is from another angle. Ted Musgraves in car camera, actually. The old camera. Ted never lifted. He saw an opening there, and uh, that was the thing to do. Keep his foot to the floorboard. Bill Elliott was very close to being involved in that crash, but I think he got by unscathed. Meanwhile, here they come. Those on the lead lap are eligible to come in for a pit stop. Sterling Marlin has stayed out to lead a lap. But he's on seven cylinders right now. He doesn't have any choice to get those bonus points while he can. Every car except two, I think, is going to make a pit stop. And they'll probably all get four tires this time. They only took on right side tires during the green flag. We already see the 24 foot car going around changing the left side. 28 car already changing left side. He's on his way. And looks like that Dale Jarrett is going to win the race out of the pit. You see a tire going across pit road. This will be Ricky Rudd. Here comes Spencer. Change the left sides only. Sterling Marlin will come in next time, and this caution will allow him to raise the hood and check to see if they can determine why he's lost a cylinder. 67 laps completed. Back in just a moment. Caution. Let's go to John Curtis. Sterling Marlin, who had stayed out under caution to lead a lap, has come on to pit road for four times. Also, we expect him to go under the hood. Remember we told you Tony Glover had said they had dropped down to seven cylinders? They've got their fingers crossed that it would only be a loose plug wire. But now a little bit of a problem as uh, they have a problem with the left front on, so they'll go ahead and send Sterling out and then maybe bring him back in the next time by to go up under the hood to uh, check for that plug wire. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. A moment ago, Larry McReynolds and Dale Jarrett talking about why they would only take on left side tires. And what Larry was talking with Dale about, hey, he said the right side tires we took off after 50 laps looked very, very good. We know that we can change left sides once, and we've already done that now. And we can leave those same lefts on for the remainder of the race. They're going to be so good. So we're in good shape. We've got two rights about 15 laps ago, two fresh lefts. You're running up front. We're out of a lot of traffic. We're in good shape. But Dale said, hey, you the man. So McReynolds knows what he's talking about, hopefully, for Dale Jarrett. Let's go up to Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, just about two laps before that caution came out, Ricky Rudd had radioed down to Bill Engel, his crew chief, that he could not hang on to that lead draft that was trying to catch the lead pack. Ricky, of course, actually in that second draft. So that pit stop was perfect for them. Billy told Ricky that the, the right side tires were good. They only had about 20 laps on them. They changed the left sides, pick up the track position, and head back out. Uh, preliminary report from Renee White, who is uh, Derek Cook's fiance, that Derek is okay, and we'll be waiting for him to come out of the medical center here at the track. Cope, the reason for the caution, the first caution. We are back at Talladega where the caution remains on. They're cleaning up the racetrack from this accident. Derek Cope and John Andretti get together coming off of turn four almost as you enter pit road. And Derek Cope gets the worst end of the bargain. See, Andretti goes on by and he slams into the wall head on right here. But Derek did get out of the car, fortunately, and walk away. Now let's take a look at the pit stop summary. Mark Martin came in first, is now fourth. Jeff Gordon lost four positions. Dale Jarrett gained two, and you can see Rudd and Spencer also in their pit summary. Let's go to uh, Bill Weber. With Derek Cope, who is unhappy, has been patiently waiting. Derek, you're okay. What happened? 
Well, it's just a mistake on my part. You know, I had the straight arrow forward up on the on the bottom side, trying to go back underneath uh, Michael Andretti, and he got on the outside. And I started to move up in front of him. I thought I had room, didn't have it, and he got in. We got together there and uh, hurt both race cars. It's unfortunate for straight arrow held south and dead because we had a good race car today. Hey, Derek Cole, out of the race there at Talladega, back upstairs. Derek, better go back inside. That was not Michael Andretti. It was John Andretti. <laughs> He said Michael Andretti. <laughs> <Didn't notice it. laughs> the green is back out, by the way, and Dale Jarrett has taken off here a little bit. It looks like they're about four deep back there, at least three deep coming off of turn two, heading down into turn three. There comes Michael Walker making three deep, Rusty Wallace in the middle, and Bobby Hamilton on the outside there. Now, Ricky Rudd is pulled up on the back of Dale Jarrett. There's, what is that, six cars? And there's a bunch. Of them. <laughs> Terry Labonte, the pole on the cornflake Chevrolet. Oh, oh, that, I thought somebody blew up and then went through that oil dry. Scare me to death, Benny. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Jimmy Spencer's hung on the inside. John, what did they find out about the four car? Well, Bob, uh, talking to Tony Glover just a moment ago, he says what they have found on the, the four car is it is something they cannot fix today. They're going to have to ride around seven cylinders out there and hope the engine lasts all day long. Now, Jeff Gordon came in running second, went back out, I believe, running sixth, lost four spots. The reason is, when he got into his pit stall, he was too close to the left side of the car, too close to the wall, presented a problem for the jack man, and that cost him some extra seconds here in the pit. He's back up to fourth, and it's a very expensive problem for Sterling Marlin because the leader of the points after this race gets a hundred thousand dollar bonus and of course if he would win today he would get a one hundred thousand dollar bonus from uh, winston for the moment but if he should go on then and win a third of the four crown jewels from nascar it would be worth a million dollars so he's not going to win here today but he's got two more chances yeah. Yeah. he can win the total gold 600 charlotte and a mountain dew 500 dollars and then still get his million dollars. right Correct. <laughs> Ramfield suffering. Where uh, there have been seven leaders in this event so far, and with his lap led here today, Dale Earnhardt has now led at least one lap in every super speedway race. Two, four, six, eight, what is it? Ten cars, two by two. And that's going to cost them some speed. Looks like ducks going to water, doesn't it, Bob? <laughs> you have the big trickle there. You see Charles that stairs a little bit. Doesn't make any big radical moves, but still has to move around quite a bit. He's caught right in the middle of that big pack. Turning, turning. Yep, you always want to keep that rear wheel moving so that you can just feel what the back of the car is doing. Boy, it looks so easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't try this at home. No. Well, they're low if you need it, but you need to stay out there right now. Say goodbye, Morgan. The spotter saying, tell him, hey, that faster groove is, that outside groove is the faster one. You need to stay out there to go by Morgan, he said. Well, low if it helps you. of Darrell Walker, but Michael Walker went down and closed that spot. That four cars have pulled away. Ricky Rudd running back in fifth spot, and then the two-by-two two begins. Yeah, that, that crowd back there racing has caught up to him. That's a good word, crowd. <laughs> so it is proud. Covered inside. In this group, you see right in the middle there is Rusty Wallace, who has come up to run in this group. Pack, crowd, whatever. <laughs> Gordon Shepard making the 3D. 
Bill Elliott down there with him with Todd Bodine. Rookie driver Robert Prescott caught in the middle there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, he goes up off the coast to Darrell Walker. Rusty Wallace looking that over. Darrell said, rookie, stay down there. Walker just said there's not a thing in the world he can do. Not they're just going to go by him on both sides. But Presley's having a good run, John Kernan. Larry back off and up. Darrell Walker went up there, so he got himself a uh, run. Now let's go to John. Well, talking with his crew chief, uh, Charlie Presley, this morning, uh, the one concern he had about Robert was his lack of experience in the draft. In fact, he had talked about it and said, line up, stay in line, try and stay in line. And as we saw right there, he kind of, uh, not a passing grade that last time here in drafting university as he got caught up in the middle. But that is their big concern. They want him to stay in line, get a lot of drafting experience. They think they've got a good car that is very comfortable out in the draft, and they'd like to have a really good finish. Robert Presley is running higher than the other rookies in the race at this moment. We see another rookie, Ricky Craven, the Kodiak car right at the tail end of that pack. You see Robert, he's not going to get caught. Let someone get on the outside of him now and then. No, he was up against that car. I made sure nobody was going on the outside of him that time. Oh. You know what? Morgan Shepard still running the low side of the racetrack, trying to get to the front. Todd Bodine right behind Elliot. Jeff Bodine right behind his younger brother, Todd. Ooh, Jeff moved up there. The three deep situation. Riding on top, the Budweiser car of Ken Schrader. Now we see Ricky Rudd there. He was in this lead draft. He has fallen back into this group, so evidently his chest is still not as good as you'd like for it to be. And we see Darrell Walker also. Bill Weber. I just talked to Billy Engel about that. He said Ricky's doing fine. He said uh, they came back in, put on the tires, everything's going okay. He said Ricky needs a car behind him, wants a car behind him. He's faster when he's leading instead of following. But they're uh, pretty content with where they're at right now. They think they can uh, run down the leaders, and now he's going to try and hook up with Kenny Schrader and continue in that pack with Terry Labonte, Michael Waltrip, and Jimmy Spencer. They're going to have a tough time running down those leaders. They're running over 196 miles an hour right Thank now. Thank you. Pulling away. Wow. interval that has developed between the first four and the second pack. It is still Dale Jarrett leading Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, and Jeff Gordon at Talladega. Jarrett, Martin, Earnhardt, and Jeff Gordon. And then, right now, Dale Jarrett is pulling these cars as fast as they've been all day. Yeah, they're running over 196 miles an hour, so they're as fast as they run all day long. And, then, and I'm sure that the others back there are content. Now, if he slows down, then they might say, well, I can pull this train faster. But they're pulling away from that second group of cars, and that's what they want to do. Jarrett's best finish here at Talladega, previously a third in the 1993 Winston Select 500. And here comes the second group, led by Jimmy Smith. Gap that Ned was talking about between the lead pack and that group. And here, folks, unbelievable. Sterling Marlin in the pitch, John Kernan. Well, they're working in what it looks like the area of the valve frame. Sterling, you guys running around on seven cylinders, decided to pull it in. Do you have any idea what the problem is? I'm back with the broke on. Broke rock on, broke valve swing or something. Uh, by the time it's going to pass uh, for the lead, it went on seven cylinders. And uh, we could run good if we was in traffic, but uh, out there by the it just kept getting slower and slower. And, I thought it parked before it blew the motor all the way up. So we're going to try to see what it is. Now, this was going to be a very big day for you, a very potential big day. But as Tony told me, hey, it's not the end of the world. No, it's not. We, uh, we still got two more shots. And, uh, he's called that team to come back. And uh, we've, we've completed a lot of races this year. And this first race, we had trouble. So uh, let's get a catch every now and then. That's Sterling Marlin, who's behind the wall. And we'll see how Sterling does at Daytona on July 4th weekend when we bring you the Pepsi 400 from that facility. Well, now the distance has sort of stabilized between this group of four cars and the second group, which is being led by Jimmy Spencer. There's a tough pack. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. 
Spencer, and he's leading a group of cars, as Ned said a moment ago. Ooh. Just about to get together there. That's Todd Bodine and Bill Elliott on the low side of Michael Waltrip. Jeff Burton having a little bit of problem right now. Bill Weber, what's going on? Well, well, Benny, he radioed in. They thought it might be the ignition or a fuel pickup problem. They've just radioed in to stay out there and see if it gets any better or they'll try and fix it on a pit stop. Jeff has just radioed to Donnie Richardson that the car is okay. So hopefully he'll be able to pick up the pace. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. And a little bit of concern growing here in the 28 pits as Dale Jarrett is leading that draft and gets a challenge from Mark Martin. Jarrett just radios to Larry McFriend the car is starting to get loose. They told him to, hey, 10 laps until halfway. You can hang on, but I'm not sure he's going to do it. As Martin and now Earnhardt and Gordon try to draft by. All form the low line and all pass by him, putting Jarrett from first to fourth. He had been running lap speeds of about 48.8 seconds. Terry Labonte won the pole at 48.72. And 196 and a half miles an hour. But the last five laps, Jared had slowed down to about 49 seconds. So the others figured, oh, hey, we can run this thing faster than that. So let us leave. Mark Martin now leads this race. He has never won here at Talladega in 18 previous starts. Now, remember, Jared did not take on right side tires during that last pit stop. Might be telling here right now. Looking on in the pit area. He led more laps than anyone else here last year in this same car. Dale Earnhardt won the race, but uh, was up front most of the day. Back to the second pack. Let's see how that's going. It's still Jimmy Spencer leading Terry Labonte, and then again the two by two formation with Presley and Schrader side by side. I'll tell you what, all those spots are being contested, aren't they? As Dick Dribble and Jeff Lodine go three abreast. Meanwhile, on top of Morgan Shepard's car, as he follows Ricky Rudd down in turn one, that's Michael Walter, the Pennzoil car. Wow, look how close Ricky Rudd and Michael Walter came. And what happened to Schrader? He just pulled down low. Looks like he's got a... Got a run going, maybe. Oh, no, I think something happened to his car. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you're right. Yeah. Huh. Well, Jerry Punch is on the way to Ken Schrader's pit to find out, but yeah, just all of a sudden he turned to the left and got down the road. Everybody's passing by him. That's it, Darrell Walker. He's trying to go by on the inside. Looks like they are going to go in the corner three abreast. Go down on the outside and go number seven. Here comes Dick Trickle in car number 15. 88 completed, 100 to go. Meanwhile, in front of this group, Terry Labonte, the pole sitter, is fast venture to get in front and try to lead them back to the front or at least keep up with Mark Martin. And Morton Shepard, what a run he had down on the inside. He moves up into the sixth position. There is 6.4 seconds separating the first four cars from this pack. Well, it was about five seconds. A little bit early. Now the front pack is pulling away. Mark Martin has gotten in front, even though their lap speeds have not picked up again. The history lap speeds have slowed a little bit. And once again, Todd Bodine and Michael Walker. Looks like they almost made some contact as Bill Elliott hung on the middle. As Trickle tries to get on the inside, Darrell Walker just passed Elliott. Schrader lost a few positions, but it seems like he's kind of stabilized right now. Jerry, what is the situation? The crew were watching what you were watching up there. They saw Schrader pull down and the cars go by. I said, oh my gosh, we might have an engine problem, but that's not the case. To put it in Kenny Schrader's terms, when he talked to Ken House, he said, hey, I zigged and everybody else sat. <laughs> so I got left on the inside, but the engine's fine, guys. So he's back up running full speed. All right. Budweiser driver. Out for a Sunday afternoon drive at 195 miles an hour. Once again, Bill Elliott gets hung in the middle as Rusty Wallace is on the high side. I thought Dick Trickle did that last lap. <laughs> Still 
37 cars in the lead lane. Elliott get hooked up. Meanwhile, Loy Allen trying to make it three abreast on the inside of Bobby Hamilton. That's Hamilton in the red and blue 43. There it is, the STP Pontiac. Loy Allen in the white number 19. I'm told that the 19, the 9, and the 98, Jeremy Mayfield, Lake Speed, and Loy Allen had fallen several seconds behind this group, but they got together, hooked up three, three nose to tail, and ran this group down. So Loy Allen, who started from the outside of the front row and led the first 18 laps of this race, is coming back. He now is in, let's see. 22nd position. Mm -hmm. And the gap. There, love, you need it. The gap. The gap between this group and the leg has opened up to eight seconds. Hush up, Mark. Great time. by Mark Martin, who is the only driver to post seven top tens in the first eight races this season, looking for victory number one in 1995. Sunday afternoon, but it will be in Sonoma, California at Sears Point Raceway, a road course. is 8 Mark 300 at 4 o'clock Eastern Time live next Sunday afternoon here on ESPN. We have completed half distance. Mark Martin, the leader at the halfway point. And... Wait here just a second, and I'll tell you what our concern is. Happens to be some moisture that is falling from the sky. None right here. But as they head toward the start finish line, there you can begin to see a little, a little bit of rain. There you see a few spiders. Yeah. As they go in the turn line. Right at the start finish line, it gets a little heavier. Man, it's nothing that's going to slow them down at the moment, and I really believe that it's a very uh, isolated area. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I tell you what, when that stuff hits your windshield at 192 miles an hour, it looks like someone poured a bucket of water. On you. <laughs> I mean, one little drop looks like somebody poured a bucket of water on your windshield. Man, it's terrifying. <laughs> The four cars continue to run at the front of the field, and the interval between fourth place Dale Jarrett and fifth place Terry Labonte, who leads the second group, there you see it has gone from 8.4 seconds on lap 92 to 9.8 seconds on lap 96. Going down in turn one, that time we didn't see very much winch, much rain at all on the camera. And here you see, we just saw the four go out of sight, and here they come. So they're almost that full backstretch ahead, not quite the full backstretch. You see Schrader is falling back to the very end of that line, so... Bobby Hamilton and Ted Musgrave come up on him. told that the crew is still not concerned about the Budweiser Chevy. It's going to be okay. There's Bobby Hamilton right in front of him. The run stand Richard Petty is still doing well and watching this afternoon. Hello, Richard. Everybody's still thinking about you, praying for you. Glad that things are going well. And Dale Lemon said to do him out of the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he said, please, just go. <laughs> I bet they didn't have to say that one time. I'm kidding, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows how Dale is. Mayfield. They passed about 10 cars and they're still running right together. And Ted Musker said, hey, they're having some success. I think I'll just hook on to them. There are 36 cars still on the lead lap past half distance. Sean Kernan has more on this group of cars running tightly together, including Loy Allen. 
Bob, the 19, the 9, and the 98 uh, have all got together and chased down this group. They were several seconds behind them. The reason being, they're sort of team cars. They've all got TriStar Motors, so they've gotten together on the radio with their spotters and crews, decided that those three cars should hook up in a line and try and work their way toward the front. And those TriStar Motors have been strong, especially on the restrictor plate engine tracks over the years. And Mark Smith up in Asheville, Hendersonville, North Carolina, does a terrific job with these restrict plate engines. They stay right together down on the inside, coming up on Rusty Wallace. Engines in general, especially restrict plate engines. Mm -hmm. 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and so on right here. Ford. I saw some raindrops on her yep. camera back there in turn two. Rusty Wallace running the 16th position. <laughs> Hamilton, he's running that patented Richard Petty line way up on the outside. Now these guys are racing. He's got front four up the front of this line. Single, single line pulling away. These fellas are going ahead. Yeah, the first four cars are running together and nothing's happening, and that's why we're showing you this racing. It continues to be Martin, Earnhardt, Gordon, and Jarrett, top four. And we see Loy Allen was able to get behind. He just pulls out and leaves Pearl Lake Speed hanging. See that tire mark on the side of... Right. Here it is. Yes. Loy Allen's car, so he's been close to somebody. Yeah, big donut. Real close. Hello, Tyre. The health source car. We understand that the rain has stopped where it was falling the heaviest in turn number one. And this place is so big, it's like, you know, if you live on a farm, say, it was raining over in the North 40. Yeah. And it can be raining at one place or not. Or another, not yeah. at the house. Yeah. Yeah. Shepard's car. There are 22 cars in this group that we're watching. Well, I thought that uh, Bodine and uh, Frickle were going to get together there. They do come close. I see a few bruises on the Todd Bodine's car down the field. Jeff Bodine has said his little brother, let's just run this little crew, see if we can get it worked out. Jimmy Spencer up there, maybe we can get by these cars. Bobby Labotti, now he's coming up there with his throw from about 9 or 10 plus. He's been back as far as 20 something. And uh, he has worked hard to get himself back up there. Ninth place right now, the 18 car, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. There's some moisture moves, guys. Is it over? May have moved from turn one over to turn two. The back stretch. Okay. Maybe we'll move on out of here. Yeah. Now these are very widely scattered and very light showers. They're not affecting uh, the, the competition. No caution because of it. But a little bit of rain is in the vicinity of Talladega Super Speedway. It's Mark Martin leading his best finish here at Talladega. In previous races, he has finished third on five different occasions. As engine RPMs climb, the pieces inside the engine need to be bigger and stronger. Take the camshaft. That's a stock camshaft bearing I'm holding in my hand. They found that the camshaft was actually twisting from front to back, therefore distorting cam timing. They needed a bigger and stronger camshaft. So they bored out the cam journals and made the camshaft larger. So therefore, they needed a new cam bearing. While they were making one, why not make a stronger one? You can see that the new cam bearing is steel roller bearings. There they are installed in the block. You now have a larger, stronger camshaft, a better bearing for better and more durable engines. 
9,000 RPMs means that you have to have all those parts if the engine's going to stay together. Not to say that they're turning 9,000 a day. They aren't. About 7,000, but at the short tracks, they do turn 9. Yeah, big difference in the RPMs with the restrictor plate motors than on the short tracks. Still four cars in the lead draft. There they are. Martin, Earnhardt, Gordon, and Dale Jarrett. And they pulled away to about a 20-second lead over the second group, which is still being led by Terry Labonte. Steve Grissom uh, is a lap down in 39th position. By the way, both uh, Brett Bodine and Ward Burton have gone to lap down. And there we can see here at Talladega what Ned was talking about with the restrictor plates. 65, 6,600 RPMs. He'll go down the corner. He'll slow down just, well, supposed to slow down. <laughs> He's in the draft with the four leaders who just went by and coming down the front trial here. And Steve just went two laps down. And we can see that evidently he has some type of problem with the car. 187, 180 miles an hour. We saw 199 earlier in the day. And that accounts for the fact that he is way back in 39. Yep. Two laps down. Oh, look at this. And Dale Jarrett and Dale Earnhardt almost get it together as they come off turn four. And Jarrett trying to go by Earnhardt. Does this mean Earnhardt has a problem? They better not race too long back there. That other two will be gone. Yeah, Martin and uh, Gordon are ahead and will continue to pull ahead if these two remain side by side. Earnhardt staying up there high to get him a good run off the turn to Jerry Beardy. Now, let's see, can they run down that front twosome? And believe me, Jeff Gordon will not pass right now. Hoping that he and Mark Martin can pull away from him. But I believe that they might be able to. I don't know. They're back pretty far, and Earnhardt's not helping Dale that much. And Earnhardt has even lost three or four car lengths since they came off the second corner. Yeah. Yeah. A cylinder or something. Remember Sterling Marlin, who uh, was second in points going in, has had problems. He's 29 laps down, and now Dale Earnhardt drops back. It's too early to tell you whether or not he has a problem, but he's dropped back quite a bit in the last couple of laps. Yeah, and I think they've lost a the draft of that front group. The only thing that might save them, uh, the front two are coming up on a big pack of cars, and uh, they might be able to pick that draft up and, and help them move in closer again. Now it looks like Earnhardt is closing back in, or he hasn't lost anything to Dale Jarrett. There's our leader, Mark Martin, in the sixth car. John Curtin, what's going on? Well, I'd walked up to Andy Petrie and Richard Childress and asked them what was going on with the, the car, and they said, well, we don't really know, but Dale is mad about something. Uh, he wonders if uh, when Jared got underneath him, it might have gotten the car just a little bit loose. But we should have pit stops here very, very shortly. What we're looking at is around lap 116 is what uh, Andy Petrie and the crew are hoping to get together and pit with that entire lead pack. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, a few minutes ago, John, down in the Dale Jarrett pit, Steve Meal, Mark Martin's crew chief came down and talked to Larry McGrill and said, hey, let's pit together, and they decided on lap 117. They were going to come in the 6 car and the 28 car on lap 117. However, that was before the 28 and the 3 dropped back a good 15 car lengths. That may change it a little bit. In fact, Larry McGrill just ran up pit road to the Mark Martin pit to talk again. So we're going to wait and see what's going to happen here in about 7 laps. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Jeff Gordon has told Ray Everham he's pedaling as fast as he can. They were not able to get by Earnhardt when Dale was running stronger. Obviously, now they've gotten around him. And I went up to Ray Everham, who's one of the nicest guys you'll find, and I said, what are you going to pit? He says, you dummy, we're going to pit when those guys in front of us do. So right now, he's going to follow the six car down pit road. They're trying to work out that. As far as Robert Presley is concerned, he's going to follow the man in front of him, Terry Labonte. That could be in as few as four laps. Meanwhile, the leaders are going through a huge amount of traffic, both Martin and Gordon. And they just ran that last lap at about 200 miles an hour. Whoa. They were coming up on that big pack of traffic. And we see Jeff Burton, that re the Revestus car, as he goes a lap down. There he is. Now Greg Sachs, the Kendall Oil car. Kyle Petty has been left, the Coors Light car. So Mark Martin pulls up the inside, is going by Greg Sachs. Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon are leading the Winston Select 500 at Talladega at the conclusion of 113 laps. 
You arrive back with us just in time for pit stops. The four cars running up front are in. Jared, Earnhardt, Martin, and Gordon. Gordon finished already at the top of your screen. Right side tires only. Here's the work on Dale Jarrett's car. Trouble on the right rear. Trouble on the right rear of Dale Jarrett's car. It's all these cars are leaving. They finally... They, Jerry Buck, what's going on? They had a problem with the lug wrench, the air wrench on the right rear, and now they finally get a second race. Raymond Fox grabs one. The car now stalls, and Jarrett nearly gets tagged by Rusty Wallace, leaving the pit. So three different problems. The air wrench quit. They couldn't get the second one across the wall. And then as they left the pit road, the car stalled. And then Dale Jarrett had to dodge a couple of cars, including Rusty Wallace. What a tough break. And Rusty Wallace got this right side. Five seconds of two tire change for the Miller genuine draft board. He is down and away. And Rudd is having problems. They're pushing his time machine, trying to get it started down pit road. Evidently stalled the engine, trying to get it started. And it will not start. Meanwhile, cars are coming in for pit stops, getting all jammed up. Maybe some rain drops off in turn four. Let's go to the pits and John Turner. Right side tires only for Terry Labonte, the pole sitter, his brother Bobby Labonte, did it right for him. Likewise, we go with right side tires. The catch can man hitting the rear spoiler, knocking a little bit on right rear trouble. And the 10 car does get started as Terry Labonte and uh, the rest of the crew move away. You see that guy get the love that jammed on the right rear, bang the, the pocket off the pit wall, hit pit road evidently. The nut came out then. Surely will be the next thing that somebody comes up with to prevent that problem. We've seen it so much, and man, can it have a profound effect on the race. We're starting to see that each and every, and we see some rain. Yep, turn four. That's the front stretch. That's right coming by us right now. Here it is, Benny. There we see, he's trying to, see, he gets tired off, now he's going back on. Well, he wouldn't go. He couldn't get the socket to go the other way. Yeah. He finally just took his hand and beat it down. Jerry has a report on the 28 car and the problems it had on pit road. It's the same old story, just different chapter. Take a look. Raymond Fox trying to put the lug nuts back on. He had just put one lug nut on. This is the second lug nut he was trying to tighten up. It was stuck inside the socket. He shook it. He beat it. It wouldn't come out. He took a few extra seconds trying to get it out. I twist and twist and will knock him out of the socket. They ran across. That cost him an extra five and a half seconds here in the pits as the 15 car, Dick Trickle, now comes back in for an unscheduled stop, Bob. Yeah, that's the thing that I'm talking about. Somebody has got to be able to prevent that from happening because it happens so frequently. They're your top two, Gordon and Martin now. Raymond Fox changing the right rear tire changer. Eric Gordon for years has been the right rear tire changer. He hurt his back. I think it was at North Wilkesboro that he hurt his back and he hasn't changed the right side tire since then. And Raymond Fox has been doing the job. And look at the statistic on Jeff. There's a lot of laugh in every race this year. Now these guys came out of the pit together. Perfect. That's the way they wanted it. Earnhardt and Jarrett came in at the same time. They were running together. It hurt Earnhardt when Jarrett had his problems yep. because he didn't have a that drafting partner out there. Yep. Jarrett's now about 15 seconds behind the leaders. And Gordon and Martin put another lap on Dave Marcus. He does have the 40 car of Greg Sachs to draft with, but the 40 is a lap down. It doesn't matter to Earnhardt as long as he can run as fast as yeah. he can. Yeah, if he can run as fast as he can, well, that'll, that'll help him. Jarrett's running totally by himself out there right now. Well, uh, instead of going to our meteorologist, John Kernan, uh, Bill Weber, what's the weather story in your area? That's a tough act to follow. It is drizzling down here, but Ray Everham has been lobbying NASCAR because of the rain. Uh, he told his driver, Jeff Gordon, after they pitted, get back out front, stay out front. It's raining. That's where we want to be if this thing gets stopped. But Ray uh, was talking to several officials trying to get this race. Maybe perhaps uh, the caution came out. Perhaps in the interest of safety, he wanted everyone to know that it is raining. And as you can see from that roof cam shot, that it is coming down. Dr. Jerry Punch. 
And Bill, some of the drivers out of mind to the pits are complaining vehemently. Oh. And now apparently the caution will come out. Dale Jarrett just ready to say it is pouring in turn three. And NASCAR heard some of the drivers. And because of the safety concerns, we'll put out the, the yellow flag here due to the shower. Bob? Now this will be important to see who comes back to the line. Uh, I don't think that this is going to be the end of the race because it would appear as if it's just a passing shower. But here comes Jeff Gordon leading Mark Martin off the fourth corner to the caution flag. And Mark is uh, so far not making an attempt to pass him. He's slowed down and just going to let it go that way. Not thinking that this will be the end of the race. Caution comes out of lap at the end of lap 122. Apparently, Randall LaJoy has either made a fantastic pit stop or had not pitted at all. He is being shown in fourth position. This will be a big break for him. He's up in fourth place. Dale Jarrett is fifth. Earnhardt is still in third place. Bobby Labonte had a good pit stop. He's up in sixth place. Mm -hmm. But this is going to bunch them all up again. We still have 23 cars on the lead lap. problems that Ricky Rudd had that we saw them pushing his car down pit road. Rudd did lose a lap in the pits. Let's show you how they're running at this point as the race has been slowed because of a shower. Gordon and Martin have never won here at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt is the all-time leading active winner at this Speedway, having won seven times, twice in this event, 94 and in 90, and he's won the summer race here, the Die Hard 500, on five different occasions. And we see Steve Grissom in, in back in 37th spot. I believe he blew up just as he went by the, the booth just a moment ago. Really? He was by himself, went by, making all that noise, and whack, <laughs> off his went. There is uh, Steve Grissom as we ride with him. Is he running? Now, we had said, we saw him get left the second time, but he had not made a pit stop here, so he still, he got one of those laps back. Let's see if he coast in the pits. There the field is. Is Steve going to catch up with the field, or is he going into the pits? Let's see. I guess I guess it is running because he put it in second gear. And Randy LaJoy, Ned, is on pit road. He had not pitted, as you pointed out. Here's John Kernan. Well, Randy LaJoy pulls in. They stretched the fuel mileage and wound up, well, not too bad a break for them. It will be a four-tire change for Randy LaJoy. Work being completed on the right side. They'll come around to the left. Let's go down pit road to Bill Weber. And I'm standing here with Rick Hendrick, the car owner for the DuPont Chevrolet, and driver Jeff Gordon smiling in this little shower that we're having. You're in front and happy about it. Well, you know, you're... You don't, you're not happy to see the rain, but if it's going to rain and you're out front, you feel pretty good about that. So, uh, car's running well. I just don't know what's going to happen here in this weather. Another good weekend for you, Rick. You had the pole sitting car here as well, Terry, with a good run in qualifying. Well, Terry's had a good day. Kenny ran well. We've got a little problem with the engine now, but uh, all three of the teams are doing well. But we'd like to say hello to my dad back home who's not doing so well. And uh, we'll be back Monday, and I uh, hope you're going to be better, Pop. And uh, maybe we can win this thing for you today. All right, so a little extra incentive for Rick Hendrick and company. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Now, up in the Hendrick pits, they're talking about the fact that it's raining. It's uh, significantly, I don't think they've even felt a drop of rain down here where Dale Jarrett's pits are, Larry McReynolds. Well, up to the caution fail, it was raining real hard in our pits. You know, unfortunately, everything's went great today for the Texaco Havilah Mac 2 Ford, but we had a lug nut hang on the right rear on that last green stop, and when them guys is out there running, you know, 190, 193 miles an hour, and you're sitting in here with a lug nut hung fighting to get it off, you know, you're losing precious time, but caution let us catch back up, and uh, got Got a lot of racing to go. We'll just see what happens. Looks like you may have one of the two or three, maybe four quickest cars here. Well, you, you know, we've been quick since we backed off the trailer on Friday. And, uh, you know, I can't deny those other three cars up there, the 6, the 24, and the 3. They look strong. I, I don't know what happened a while ago when, when Dale and Dale got behind. I think something happened to the three car. Went down and talked to Andy. He says, heck, I don't know what happened. But uh, Caution's bunched us all back up. And we'll hopefully this rain will pass over. We'll get back after it. Larry McReynolds ready to race some more. Thanks to 28 car. Has a great chance at Victory Lane today, Bob. It uh, has been a great race so far, and one of several drivers still very much in the hunt. But Martin and Earnhardt 
How many more cars are going to pit? Are they going to change? Now, didn't they just change right sides a moment ago? Yep. John Kern, what's going on? What we're being told is Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt will pit for fuel and left side tires. Mark Martin will pull in. They will go to work on the left side. Loy Allen will also pull in. He's in the middle of it. Loy Allen's only going to take a splash of fuel. Dale Earnhardt's crew getting the left side tires on. Mark Martin's work is already done. He's got Michael Walker clocked in. It looks like Earnhardt is going to be marked out. No, he does not. And Loy Allen beats Earnhardt out. Earnhardt's car looked like it almost stalled there as he came back out on pit road. Very interesting strategy going on here as we're just a few uh, minutes away from a restart. There has only been one incident so far in this event. That was when uh, Derek Cope and John Andretti got together off four. They came off turn four, and Derek Cope said that he didn't know John Andretti was out there. He said, actually said Michael Andretti. John Andretti was out there. They made contact to watch as Derek Cope goes up and have been other incidents in the pits. Here's Jerry Punch with that report. What we're seeing happen more and more, the fact that these sockets here are being used to change tires on the back of the car, and the lug nuts actually are very sloppy, for the want of a better word, inside the socket. Very, very loose. You see, I can almost turn the socket a half a turn. When I put the lug nut in, if, it, if you put it in in a hurry to one side, it'll actually twist around off the lug nut and jam it in. Here's exactly what happened as it began to twist off the back side of the lug nut on Dale Jarrett's right rear tire. We've seen it happen at least once a week now for the past four or five races. Someone's going to devise something, maybe making the lug nuts even bigger or the socket smaller so there isn't as much movement or play when you jam that socket on for a quick pit stop. Bob? Of course, they want that socket loose so they can jam it as fast as they get up on there. That helps to get it up on the uh, the lug nut quicker, but can this, be problems. This is Jeff Gordon's 71st NASCAR Winston Cup race, and look at the record that Gordon, Earnhardt, Allison, Waltrip, and Wallace have accumulated in their first 70 NASCAR Winston Cup races. Dale, six wins. Of course, Jeff has five, but 33 top fives for Dale. That's eight an pole position. Moment. Yeah, for for Davy Allison. 33 top fives are the top seven in first 70 races. Man, that's amazing. All right, the green flag is out. The sun shining now in some portions of the racetrack, and we're back to a, to a racing condition with Jeff Gordon still up front. But Dale Jarrett is now second. Third is Bobby Labonte. Fourth, Terry Labonte. And Robert Presley is the green car at the top of the track in fifth. And his fifth for him. That was he. Kenny Schrader, he made several pit stops, and he's not back up to speed on the uh, restart. Rick Hendrick mentioned the fact, I believe, that maybe he lost the center. Let's get to the truth out from Jerry Punch. Well, there's still speculation, man. In fact, a moment ago, Kenny said, I'm not sure. He said it could be a plug wire, but it's sputtering. Whatever it is, we have seven instead of eight hitting right now. And Jeff Gordon goes backwards. He is back to what? position as Dale Jarrett now has the lead with the Labonte brothers second and third, then Presley and then Gordon. Let's see what happened here. Jarrett gets a run on Jeff Gordon, just drives by down on the inside, and here comes Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, Robert Presley drives right on it there and just goes right on by. That's just an example of what happens when you get hung out to dry and nobody will go with you. You finally get back in line and you may have lost four or five positions. Now he's back to fourth and headed for third. He's going right up on the outside of Terry Labonte. Will someone go up there with him? Robert Presley? Yes, he goes with him and they'll leave Terry Labonte out to hang to dry, hanging up to dry. Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon. Man, that boy's going to second. That car is bad. The man is going close. And now Bobby Labonte gets passed by several cars. And Hot Strickland is on the move. Look at him. Ball alongside Spencer. Good having a great run here today. He sure comes is. down trying to get some wins from Terry Labonte. He does that. Here comes Gerald Walter, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt trying to get back to the front. Here we see Martin going by Ricky Rudd. Well, they gave up a lot of good track position to make that pit stop to cap off the fuel and the change those left side tires. Driving with Mark Martin. Jerry, what's the story with uh, Ken Schrader?
Schrader. Bob, it's typical Kenny Schrader luck. Apparently, Ken Hallis has told me that's not a plug wire. From looking at the tack and looking inside the engine, from what Schrader is telling them, it's something deep inside the motor. They're not sure how long they're going to be able to make it. Well, more bad luck for Kenny Schrader. Waving somebody. I guess he's waving to the flag. That's who he was waving. He went by the flag stand and waved the all four as he went by. 11th in points coming into this race was Ken Schrader. 281 out of the lead. Here's Earnhardt still trying to move up through the... moment ago. He's on the outside trying to work his way back to the front. Meanwhile, Mark Martin and Erna. Erna knows that Mark Martin has a very fast race car. That's why he chose to go with him rather than the Chevrolet driver. Yeah, the Ford and Chevrolet situation don't come into it right now. You can no. get yourself a good fast race car and hook up with him and try to come to the front. That's Lloyd Allen pulling out of line and going to the inside. Look at this mess. Wow. That's a crowd right in. Yep, big crowd. So airplanes go under a blimp. Yeah. Trailing a banner. Here comes Daryl Walton on the inside trying to take over four spot. Here comes Mark Martin with him and Dale Earnhardt. Look at the banking. Five stories high. You can't even see it when you're right overhead. Hut Strickland is the driver that's now hung out to dry on the outside. Yeah. And he gets very close to it. Michael Walter? Yes. Awfully close. I guess that's Jimmy Spencer. Close to him. Yep. A lot of money going down the drain there. That's like missing the putt on 18. <laughs> He's trying to take over the third place. What's up with Darrell? He's racing here today. Man, I'm telling you, look at him go. Short tracks. New year for Darrell Waltrip. He pulls alongside Jeff Gordon, battling for second spot. Wow. He has drafting help down there, too. Look at this. He may take the lead here. What in the world is up with Darrell? He's going for it. Man, I'm telling you. He's going to get the lead. Right on through. Earnhardt's going to come down and follow that crowd. Now they've got Jeff Gordon hung out on the outside and Dale Jarrett. But that's two off, two fast cars, Jarrett and Gordon. But meanwhile, Mark Martin's back to second place and Earnhardt is in third. So their their strategy has worked out okay. They got back to the front. Let's see if Daryl Waltrip can lead this lap. He's close to the line and he yes, does. he will. He becomes our ninth different lap leader so far today. Dale Jarrett stayed out there. And Jeff Gordon's going by him. Dale had an opportunity to get back in line. He decided to stay out there on that high groove. And it might have cost him. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Now Jeff goes down to pick up his buddy Terry. The body. Well, there's Stevie Waltrip. And is she happy? And Jerry, uh, this has got to be a very happy pit crew. They are very happy, I hear, you know, tell you how impressive this run was. DW was one of those cars that came down pit road and topped off with fuel and put on left side tires. When he came back on the racetrack, he was 23rd spot. He was the 23rd car in line, and about four laps later, he is leading here at Talladega. That is impressive. Now then, Dale Earnhardt is taking over that second spot past Mark Martin, as you saw, up in the trial on the outside. impressive on super speedways this year. He finished 32nd at Daytona, 38th at Rockingham, 34th at Atlanta, 21st at Darlington. Darrell Waltrip is leading at 134 laps. He documented how he made a good advance in the points during the short track season and pick up some more here today. His crew chief, Pete Peterson, Pete Peterson was named the UAWGM Mechanic of the Race last week in uh, March. 
Jacksonville. He might win it again this weekend. I wonder if he win it two weekends in a row. Yeah, there. I think so. They're all the way. Must spot spotter to clear all the way. Outside lane fast. Outside lane fast, okay. You can go to 75 if you want to. Game because the 30s between him and the 75. And Jeff Gordon is moving once again, trying to take second. He's got Mark Martin with him on the top side of the racetrack. He's got our oh, hung out there. He sure do. Jeff comes down, drives down the track, can't do it now. Dale Jerry's coming on the outside. And here comes Gordon for the lead. He has sights set on retaking the lead, and he will do so into turn one as again Mark Martin comes along and helps him. Partnership exhibited today by Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. They are first and second, Walter third, and now the battle for fourth between Earnhardt and Jarrett. And Earnhardt, along with Terry Labonte, will both pass by Dale Jarrett. There's a shot back from our second place car back at third place, Darrell Walter, the Western Auto Chevrolet. There we see Schroeder on the inside on seven cylinders, the Budweiser Chevy. So with 136 laps now completed, it's Jeff Gordon leading the Winston Select 500. Just some incredible racing going on here at Talladega, and you watch from the Family Channel blimp. Mark Martin has taken the lead, and Jeff Gordon has lost several positions. He's on the outside, which has been the fastest groove the last couple of days. Bill Weber, what's going on with 24? Well, they just radioed in that they're having uh, the engine is skipping. They think it might be the ignition box. That was the preliminary indication from Jeff. Ray Abraham very upset. We'll try and get an update and get it back up to you guys. Wow, Jeff Gordon has been up front all afternoon but he has fallen back now here's what happened you see him going down the back straightaway going into turn three mark martin goes over and just blows right by jeff gordon and here's daryl walter on the inside of dale earnhardt takes over second place and we see gordon just go up high he realizes that he's got a, a missing situation he doesn't want to get in the way jeff gordon trying to continue his string in the last three races he's finished first second and third trying to move back up to the number one spot well, these overhead shots once again courtesy of the family channel blimp since starting its national tour in 92 the blimp has delighted thousands of us in more than 90 cities 35 states across the country this year's tour dedicated to celebrating the power of family and ken schrader has taken his budweiser car back of the wall okay and into the garage area tough break for him on the winner here Calibre. Here we are again with Mark Martin, Darrell Waltrip, Morgan Shepard is now third, and Kenny Schrader unbuckles and climbs out of the car. You see why I don't drive anymore. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, because I was thinking about it. <laughs> Beat you to the punch. There's that script, he was running up in fifth place just a half a lap ago, but now he's dropped back, and here's Dale Earnhardt with the run on Dale Jarrett, and Bill Elliott coming right in there. We haven't talked a whole lot about Bill Elliott today, but I tell you, this guy has kept right up there, and more on the 24 car, Bill. Well, Jeff has changed ignition boxes, and Rick Hendrick just told me the car is back up to speed, so we'll have to fight his way to the front. He's going under the inside of the 28 with Michael Walter right behind him, heading for the front. He's back up to fifth spot. I think that inside groove, since the rain, is the place to be. The high groove was the place to be earlier, but it looks like now the inside groove is back. Morgan Shepard, the single car, is in third place. There's a couple cars there. Darrell Walker running in second, Morgan running in third. The bodies on these cars on these race cars are so important. Chip Lane put the bodies on both of those cars of the 17 and the 21. He is quickly making a name for himself in this business on these high-speed racetracks. Let's take a look at our Budweiser race recap. Mark Martin has led 54 of the first 141 laps. We've had 20 lead changes, two caution periods, break laps, 1.5. 
for a crash, but the other for rain. The race is almost 175 miles an hour. Those who have picked up five bonus points for leading a race as the positions shuffle once again. Martin, Jarrett, Loy Allen led the first 18. Schrader also led. Jeff Gordon has been at the front. drivers that have also led a lap here today. Crowded up front. I'm telling you, only three cars are out of the race. Copen and Dreddy because of the crash. Ken Schrader just dropped out with engine problems. Man, I'm telling you, I start saying Morgan Shepard made a mistake, but it doesn't look like he did. He's up in second place, and there's, is that Spencer? Yes, it is. Trying to get by Earnhardt. They might have touched just a tick, and Jared, Jimmy Spencer. And Jeff Bodine is right up in the thick of things. Yeah, he took the provisional spot to get in this field. Look at this speed. The pins flying by. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and you were about to say no thanks either and when you realized that you used to do it, right? Uh, that's right. I said, whoops. Spencer goes up and gets close to Earnhardt. Spencer needs some help. I might drop down and help him. No, he's afraid to. Meanwhile, we got Darrell Walter. He's going to drop down and try to come up there and catch Spencer and help him out a little bit. And Michael Walter coming with him. Yep. And, and several others. Darrell's not content to follow Spencer, though. He's going to pass him or try to. Does it? Jeff Bodine, Spencer moves up the racetrack. He will go follow Bodine out of the Walker Brothers. Knows the tail. That's Spencer. Dives to the inside and goes by Jeff Bodine. This is the lead of the race. Mark Martin and Earnhardt is past Morgan Shepard to take over second place. Shepard is third and Jeff Gordon. And that portion will be gone in a minute with the way these guys are racing back here. behind him and they're running three wide. in fifth place just a moment ago. We have a report from Road Atlanta where an IMSA race is going on this afternoon. There has been a very serious crash involving Jeremy Dale and Fabrizio Barbazza. Jeremy Dale is the most seriously injured. He's been airlifted to a hospital in Atlanta and reportedly will be further taken to Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis for treatment of serious injuries. We urge you to call o'clock tonight eastern time for sports they will have more on the condition of jeremy dale who was injured in an accident at road atlanta today and our congratulations to damon hill who earlier today won the formula one race at imola this horse now beginning to pull away from those cars that were racing side by side back there never seen the race is still going on meanwhile dale jared is hooked up with jeff and i trying to we see Rusty Wallace on the inside of a three-abreast race. That was Lake Speed in the nine car, and Lake is still, well, he finally, finally gets behind Rusty Wallace. That's Lake in the same car. It's amazing that after 147 laps, this group of cars is still running together, changing position every few feet. Terry Labonte, our pole sitter, is right directly in the middle of that picture, the uh, Kellogg's Hornflake Chevrolet. He's currently in the 11th spot. Oh. Labonte, yeah. There he is. Yeah, 
pressure has fallen all the way back to this group. Yep. I don't watch it. Jimmy Special looks like he is off the pace in the smoking Jill car. Well, the 21 car of Morgan Shepard always runs well on super speedways, and here he is currently in third position, and Jerry Punch has a report. Well, Bob, that's the good news for Morgan Shepard. He is currently third. This crew chief, Eddie Wood, now along with Mark Martin's crew chief, Steve Meal, plot their next pit stop. But the bad news for the 21 car is they have lost first gear on their previous pit stop, which means they need to pit under caution. They can stay out about 49 or 50 laps, but to paraphrase Eddie Wood, he said, if we pit under green, we are in deep doo-doo. Eddie Wood is somewhat of a paraphrasing of what he said. Let's go up pit road to Bill Weber. Well, Ken Schrader is smiling on the outside, but it's tearing him apart inside Kenny. A fifth and a fourth here last year, 11th in points this season. Disappointment today, what happened? Yeah, well, we wouldn't expect this day to be any different the rest of the year. But why the cars just, we've been struggling this year. It's running pretty good enough, and I think uh, that was an obvious day, you know. But that last restart, we was like fourth or so, and it was just starting to get hard to keep up, you know. And it, I knew something was wrong, and it started fading back. And we got in the middle of a big group, and it had run fine. You had so much air around you, but uh, it just kept getting worse. Can you handicap some of those front runners for us? You got a teammate up there. The guy driving the three car looks pretty strong. Well, when I was out there, uh, we worked our way up there, and Jeff was right behind me, and uh, I thought he was looking good. And uh, I guarantee you, by the end of the day, when it comes time to pay, Terry will get up there somewhere. Ken Schrader, done for the day, back next week on the road course at Sonoma. There are the top four once again. We mentioned the possibility of Jimmy Spencer having problems. He began to drop back. We checked with his crew, and they said, nope, he just got shuffled to the back because he got out of the draft. So it's still Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, and Jeff Gordon, the top four. And trailing this lead draft back in fifth position is Daryl Walter. 151 of 188 laps have been completed here at the Winston Select 500. Back in a moment. Has a problem. Here's Jerry. The crew waiting for Dale Jarrett to come in. Apparently, they were not expecting him to pit regularly until at least about 10 or 12 laps from now. And now they're up on the wall. We are listening on their radio. We'll check back in just a moment as they wait for Dale Jarrett. He comes down pit road at 65 miles per hour. What a tough break. He would have to pit anyway in about 10 or 11 laps. He comes in early. And now the crew going to work. And we are told they have a flat right side tire. Apparently they have cut a tire. Point seven. Now, what they thought was a flat right side tire, now they're saying no, yes, we're listening on the radio, two right side tires in, less than 14 seconds. Now, but that will cost him a lot of time on the racetrack. As the leaders come uh, up on him as he goes into turn one, as you mentioned, they'll have to pit perhaps in about 10 laps or so, but he lost a lot of time before he came into the pits, and he'll lose a lot of time here, too, getting back up to speed. So one of the contenders has lost a lap. Meanwhile, Mark Martin continues to lead the foursome down the backstretch. Dick Trickle going another lap down. He is eight laps down now. In third position. across the car and how the car will be. And what we're 
talking about is when you ride behind a tractor and trailer on an interstate and you pull up right behind it, you can feel that turbulence and how your car moves around. Well, that's a 65 miles an hour. You can imagine at 190 miles an hour just how much your car moved around. Jerry Punch has more on Dale Jarrett. Let's explain what happened here a minute ago in the Haviland pits. Dale said the car got suddenly just jerked loose and he saved it. He said about 100 feet later the car got loose again and he saved it. And maybe a half a mile later the car got loose a third time and he said, he said I think I got a tire going down. So he came down and pitted. Now Larry checked both right side tires, Larry McReynolds, and both the tires were okay. He told Elsa, take it easy. He went back and said, okay now, those right side tires are fine. Go ahead and come back up to speed, but be careful. Let's see what the car is going to do. But now Dale Jarrett is back to full speed, but they are watching and waiting to hear from their driver as to possibly something broken in the rear of the car. Bob? Unfortunately, is it has, as Ned said, put him a lap down. He's in 23rd spot. He's running in front of Michael Walter, who is fifth. And that's exactly where he was running when he came off a of turn two and just shot straight up towards the wall as if, you know, a tire was going down or something happened to the car. Laps after that, but kept dropping back. We see Dick Trickle has. We saw him get lapped just a moment ago, but he's closed down the back of that lead foursome. And Ned, you were right. You told us earlier in the show that he was one of the fastest cars here in practice yesterday. Looks like we may have some rain that uh, is not too far from the racetrack. Where is that over? Uh, you can see it across there. It looks like there is some rain. Yeah. Whether it's moving this way, yeah, the wind is sort of blowing over this way, so it looks like it is not too far away. We've only got 28 laps to go here, and there are the top four. Now, how far away are we from pit stops? Maybe not. Uh, all of them will have to make another pit stop if this race goes to the end. But I'm sure those crew chiefs are looking over the hill there, and they see that rain coming. And they're all running to the NASCAR truck, looking at radar, just how close that rain is to the racetrack. Bill Weber, what is the strategy now as people begin thinking about their what should be their final pit stop? I can tell you about Jeff Gordon. They're going to try and come in about lap 170. But Jeff needs a friend. They didn't pit. When the caution came out last time, they stayed out. Everybody came in for gas. So Jeff's tank is running a little lower than the rest of the guy. Ray Everham is advertising for a dancing partner. They don't want to have to come in by themselves, but they're looking around lap 170. Let's go to John. So the other cars that also did not pit and uh, top off. Michael Walter, Bill Elliott, they expect them to pit together around lap 175. Now for Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin, who had come in, topped off, taken on left side tires, they're expected to come in with about 10 laps to go for just a gas and go. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. What they're thinking about here in the Sitco pit is just that, John Kernan. They pit it on lap 123. They can go around 50 laps. Expect them to come in on 174. They hope to be able to come down pit road even without first gear and have the crew service a car, possibly right side tires only. They would come down and hopefully pit at the same time as the six car. Both those Fords putting together on lap 174, some 14 laps from the checkered flag. Bob? Okay, so that's the strategy that everybody is thinking about. We will take a break here and uh, make sure that we have all the pit stop acting for you. It's still Mark Martin up front, leading Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, Jeff Gordon, Michael Waltrip with the emphasis now shifting a bit to the pit area. Here at Talladega in the Winston Select 500, here is the field summary where everybody is running at the moment with pit stops not too far away. The final round of pit stops, hopefully, in this event. There you can see the 22 cars are on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett after that pit stop is now one lap down, obviously. Robert Presley just made a pit stop. And Kyle Petty coming out of the pit right now. What should be his last pit stop. There's our leader, Mark Martin, looking back at second place car, Dale Earnhardt. There's the four cars running together. Dick Trickle in the last car line. The fourth quality care car is a lap down. At least one lap down. He's eight laps down. Okay. Laps down. And there's a car slow. Greg Sachs. I guess that's going down the back straight right into turn three. Looks like he should be able to coast into the pits. Could he be out of fuel? 
and Dale Jarrett is very slow down in one and two in that big group of cars. Never see Jarrett. He was leading that pack just a moment ago, and he's fallen all the way back to near the end of the line. What the problem is now? I think he gets among cars, and the car must get loose with him or something. I don't know. He had his trouble. see as he's falling back now he doesn't have to pit again and, all, and there they've got some cars coming in the pits jimmy spencer and terry labani have dropped down from the banking onto the apron and are headed for pin road among the first to come in here for the final round 167 laps completed there are a couple of dancing partners that will try to get back to the front john kernan is there no tire change for the pole sitter as Terry Labonte sifted, waiting, waiting, calculating, and okay, and Labonte is away. And Jimmy Spencer also has some fuel, and Bill Weber has more. Well, Ray Abraham is just off to my left talking to Tony Glover. They're looking for a dancing partner to come down pit road. They can't last as long as the leaders. They've talked to the 15 car. Now they're talking to the four car. They're looking at a gas and go. We'll see what happens. Jerry has a report on the 28th. Remember, the unscheduled pit stop and the speculation that something may have broken in the back of the car. Now they're suspecting that possibly Dale Jarrett has broken a shock absorber in the right rear of the car. Dale says the car is just bouncing and vibrating wildly, and he's had to back out and, of course, lost a lot of time. Jarrett led 35 laps of this race, but has fallen off the pace because of that problem. There is Mark Martin, and the pace is still about where it has been all race long, over 193 miles an hour. The average speed of the race, with a couple of cautions, is 177.8. Mark Martin has led 80 laps so far. It's on top of the Sitco car, so we can see that there is still no rain anywhere around this racetrack. Morgan Shepard has yet to post a top five finish this season. His last top five was at Charlotte last fall, 11 races ago, in third spot. I saw about three busloads of Sitco people coming in the racetrack this morning, so I'm sure they're up jumping and dancing and having a good time. Steve Meal, Jack Rouse, and whole crew because they really Jim Ford head for the pits by himself. Oh, probably didn't have uh -oh. any choice. No, he didn't. Sterling Marlin is sitting on pit road waiting for Jeff Gordon to finish his pits. Yep, Jeff is in. Uh, Sterling, there he is. Let's go to Bill Weber in the pits. This is gas only. Crew Chief Ray Abraham will count. One, two, three. That's it. Jeff's away. Right side tires for Sterling Marlin. He was going to try and help him out. Now Sterling will try and catch him. 65 miles an hour down the road. The final lap battle is underway. All this with 18 laps to go in this event. Sterling Marlin will now be able to accelerate after clearing that white line and will try to catch up with Jeff, who is quite a distance ahead of him. Yeah, that's going to be tough for him to catch up with unless Jeff backs off. They might be telling Jeff Gordon right now, wait for the four car because if he goes, if they go out there by themselves, he'd be better off waiting for the four car. Yep. They does He's leading the lead lap because the leader's just now coming across the start finish line. There is Sterling trying to catch up to Jeff Gordon. Doesn't look like that Jeff is going to wait for him. No, nope, we see Jeff Gordon way up there in the left side of our screen. The 43 car of Bobby Hamilton is in the pits. He was in 15th position when he came in. The STP Pontiac slides to a stop. Jerry, can you see it? Yes, we can. Robbie Loomis and company mimicking what they saw the Gordon crew do. Three seconds, they tossed it off in fuel, and he is down and away. As he heads by us, a lot of concern in the 21 pit. They do not want to see these green flag pit stops, knowing they will not be able to get back to speed with second gear only. There we see Terry Labonte, our pole sitter, about to go a lap down to our leader, Mark Martin. Now he, of course, has already made a pit stop. Terry Labonte has. Just a gas and go situation. But till you slow down and get your speed back up here at Talladega, not having anyone to draft with, he... Going a lap down or close to going a lap down. The 
26th car of Hutt Strickland comes in. He was running in 15th. He took over that spot when uh, the other car came in. And now with Jeff Gordon having made his pit stop and dropping from the top five, Michael Waltrip moves up to fourth, and Bill Elliott is in fifth. Believe it or not, Sterling Marlin is catching Jeff Gordon. You think he's waiting for him? I think he is. I had the clock on Jeff Gordon the last time around, 51.76. So, yeah, I think he's I think he's waiting on the full car to catch him. He realizes that they can hook up together and run so much faster. It's just senseless to run around, and he's caught him. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's closing in. They can gain that distance back in a hurry by running together. Now, maybe Jeff has a problem. I don't know. But let's see which one's going to... You're going to be the rabbit the one that runs in front. Okay. Now, we've been listening to that four car come by the booth here. That we're listening to come by here. It sounds like it's running on all eight now. I if you could hear that. It sounded like he was uh, running okay. And so we'll put our watch on next time around see how they go. And here comes Martin Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard down pit road for the final time with 15 laps to go. Mark flanks off. Then Earnhardt. Here's John Kernan. Mark Martin is in. Just a flash of fuel. Dale Earnhardt shot for Myers. One, two. Mark Martin is away. Let's go to Jerry Punches Earnhardt lead. Now my car puts the gas can in. He says, okay, let's push, 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 push. No first gear. And the car does not die. As Elliott is there, it's on Bill Weber. Elliott, one. They got some dancing partners, the 30 and the 9, but Lake Speed missed his pit. They're on their way back out trying to gain position. Moving back up to speed, Bill Elliott was fifth when he came in. We'll be back for the shootout in the last 14 laps in a moment. Back to Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. We just had some pit stops. Now watch carefully at what they do to Dale Earnhardt. He slides to a stop. Watch this. They're spreading right there. They're spreading oil dry under the right rear tire to try to help him get traction as he leaves the pits. How about that? I don't think I've ever seen that before. How about that? Here's John Kernan with Childress. Well, Richard, Dale hasn't really been taken off from the pits, so you guys tried to get him a little help there to spin the tires, didn't you? Yeah, we uh, put a little speedy dry under the rear tire, and it seemed to help us get off the pit road a lot better. You know, we just got the, the wrong gear in the car for getting off pit road here, and uh, so we had to give him a little anti-traction there. Yeah, one of the crewmen earlier in the day, when I asked him why Dale was having problems leaving pit road, it says he was trying to be very easy on the transmission. You're watching third and fourth position here. The leader of the race is Rusty Wallace. Second place is Randy LaJoy. However, they will need pit stops before too long. Can Rusty go the rest of the way? Oh. Well, only 11 more laps. Jerry Fox, can he go the rest of the way? Guys, you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. Rusty Wallace pitted on lap 126. Now, Nick O'Leela, who does a lot of the computer work and calculations, just showed me on their in-pit computer here that they are getting 7.45 miles per gallon. You multiply that by 22 gallons and figure he could go 61 and a half laps. He would have to go 62 laps to make it to the checker. They are going to roll the dice and try to make it. How about that? Wow, wow. this is going to be fun. <laughs> Randy LaJoy is in second place if Rusty again. Oh, Randy LaJoy just made a pit stop. I take that back. He was in second place. He just stopped. So it's Rusty Wallace leading. Then comes Earnhardt, Martin, Gordon, and Morgan Shepard. Well, you remember that Jerry Punch talked about a rabbit's foot that Rusty Wallace is carrying in the car today, hoping to, hoping to tear, turn his super speedway along and around. It's from a 12-year-old girl in Hibbing, Minnesota. <laughs> How about that? You think Rusty would follow behind this group and follow those three cars? That he might get better mileage. Evidently, that's not the case. Well, yesterday's Trust ARCA me, race... They know what they're doing. Yeah, well, let's hope they do. Yesterday's ARCA race came down to fuel mileage as Harris Devane ran out, coming off turn four on the last lap. Yep. to take the checkered flag. Now, that's the leader. Let's see where...
where second place is. Quite a bit of racetrack out there between the two. There they are, both Earnhardt and Martin. And there's only eight laps to go. Remember Harry Gant here a few years ago? Remember. But I think he went about 57, 58. You know, to run 61, 62 laps is just unheard of. If points were awarded right now, Earnhardt would have the lead. Jeff Gordon would be in second, Martin third, and Rusty Wallace would move up a position into fourth place. And Sterling Marlin, who was second coming into this event, would drop to fifth. This would be a real turnaround for Rusty Wallace, who has struggled in the past on the super speedways, especially this one. Seven laps. We saw in the open his problems that he has encountered here in the past. But on the other hand, the success that he had in the short track season, trying to carry it over to the biggest and fastest of them all. 15.7 seconds separates Wallace and second place Dale Earnhardt. If he doesn't run out of fuel, they can't catch him. No, they can't. There's no way they can get something else happens. As a matter of fact, that's one reason Mark Martin isn't passing Dale Earnhardt, because if they start racing, Jeff Gordon and Morgan Shepard might catch them. I think Mark is just waiting the last couple laps and then trying to make his move so that he's at least ensured a third place finish or a second place finish. Six to go. Six more. Rusty went on by. Here comes, there comes the third and fourth place cars. Once again, Sterling Marlin, the four car, laps down the 15 car, laps down. The race is for fourth place between 24 and 21. Jerry, now what are they saying in the Wallace pit? I'm not going to say Rusty lacks confidence in the rabbits, but I won't go that far. But he just radioed a minute ago and said, hey, tell Rick Mass in the one car and Bodine in the 11 that when this thing quits, not to run over me, please. <laughs> <laughs> that is a short of confidence. <laughs> Rusty moved over to get a little bit of draft off the 26 car. And unfortunately, Hutch Strickland after a great run off the pace down on the inside. Yeah, he just went a lap down. Rusty Wallace's best finish in this race previously, a 6th and 93. I think he ran out of gas. Rusty Wallace is out of fuel, coming off the second corner. Man, he tried. He ran five laps to go. Four and a half laps to go. And we have a crash off of turn four. It's Terry Labonte. And now, and there's no caution. He's down on the pit road, Bob. He's out of yeah. harm's way. Going to get the car righted, so we're okay. No caution, but Rusty Wallace has run out of fuel. And so now it'll be settled between Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin. And they should be coming around. Here they come off the fourth corner. Hooked together. There's Rusty making his way to his pit for some fuel. Meanwhile, it is Earnhardt and Martin first and second at the line. How many laps? Four to go. Four to go. Well, a tough break for Rusty. He gave it his best. Here's what happened to Terry Labonte, our pole sitter. He comes off the corner. He isn't able to use the racetrack to go because Daryl Walter was there. He simply loses it and spins down through the grass. The flaps come up, do their job, and we stay green. where the car comes to rest. Boy, the area that he spun in in previous years without the roof laps could have been a major, major accident for Terry Labonte. Rusty Wallace is back down the pits. He's done in turn one. Meanwhile, here comes Earnhardt. Three laps to go. And a black flag is out for somebody. Maybe the 77? Maybe five car. Maybe he had a speeding oh. deal down pit road. I don't know, but the black flag that start. Gave to someone. Terry Labonte went a lap down. And you know what? Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon, and Morgan Shepard are catching these. They might catch them before the race is over. How many laps to go? Two and a half. Here they are. And there we see Earnhardt and Mark Martin. That Sterling Martin car is 
is so fast that he is drunk. And Morgan Shepard to the How about that? And they're going to catch their pitcher. We're going to have a four-car race here. Here we are with two laps to go. Earnhardt by just a car length over Mark Martin, but coming up quick, Jeff Gordon and Morgan Shepard being pulled by Sterling Marlin. Now, as soon as the four-car gets there, down the straightaway, I think you get up to the six-car, move over, and let these guys race. They have, there he comes Look down. That. Let him go. Yep, he's, yep, moves out of the way. He does. Boy, he should Let's be given some kind of an award. <laughs> Gordon ought to give part of the money anyway, That's don't you right. think? <laughs> yeah, without him, he never would have Thank you, Mr. Get up there. Just took him up there and said, okay, guys, there you go. <laughs> Man, we're coming down for the white flag. More lap to go in the Winston Select 500. Martin looking for a place to go. Here they come at the line. The white flag out, one lap to go. Morgan Shepard will line up beside Dale Earnhardt for third. Oh, and Morgan gets the car out of shape. He and Earnhardt almost get together. The roof flaps do their job. Don't hit it, but hit it. Oh, hit the wall. Meanwhile, we got a race back to the line. And he backs across the racetrack. And Sterling Marlin avoids him. He just slowed down and uh, got out of the way. Here we go. It comes down now to a battle between Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon off of corner number four. Jeff Gordon looks to the inside as they come to the trioval. Mark Martin will lead them down. However, he's got the advantage. And there's the checkered flag. Mark Martin wins the Winston Select 500. Gordon is second. And Morgan and Shepard finishes third. Now you talk about a happy bunch. They never really have won that big here. And here's a more. side of Bobby Lamonti. Waltrip led him across the line. Lamonti was next and then Elliott. There's Mark Martin, the winner of the race. And a happy guy. Bill Weber is with Jack Roush. Well, there's a big celebration down here. And Jack Roush, congratulations. You're battling Ford heading to victory lane. Ford on a super speedway. Yeah. Mark and Steve and the guys just been doing a great job this year. You know, the places we haven't been particularly good at, the places where we haven't been particularly good at, we've really excelled this year. I, I'm hopes that we can make a real run for this championship. Fantastic. Speedway Jack, off. Jack, we want a super speedway race. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, Jack? Obviously, you're a big Ford guy. This must mean a lot more to you than just the prize money and the checkered flag and a win. Well, it's actually making me look pretty silly. You know, I've been making all this noise about our Thunderbird not being uh, equal to Monte Carlo, and I really believe we got some problems in the next five years with, with being with that car uh, as long as we're going to have to and facing what they've got. But we did great today. The guys were super. I'm going to walk over here and get Steve Meal for just a second. He's doing some interviews over here as well. And Steve, you, I saw your takeoff down pit road there with a few laps left to go. Where are you heading? I was begging the 21 for help. I knew they had a quicker draft coming behind us, and we were concerned about the 24. I knew my buddy Sterling wasn't getting away, but the 24 is awful good, and all I was doing was begging Eddie Wood that if they go low or we go high, you got to go with us to the other Ford. And you can see the start finish line better up there, too. So we're tickled to death. And your driver went around Dale. Uh, yeah, he went around Dale right here. I think he caught him a little bit early, although Dale had said on the radio we were going to beat him anyway. I guess they must have rubbed up the back stretch. Maybe the, maybe the 21 even hit the three, but we were clear of it, and we are just tickled to death. You hung in there all season. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Meal, Mark Martin, Jack Roush, and a Ford team celebrates a win here at Talladega. And it's Mark Martin's 15th career win, his ninth Super Speedway victory. It is his first win here at Talladega in 19 tries. Here is a look at the last lap coming off turn two. Morgan Shepard. Shepard. I'm sorry, Nick. Go ahead. Yeah, it gets a little bit loose there, and then Dick Trickle comes up on the inside, and... That didn't help the situation. Shepard goes back up into I don't think it hurt the situation, though, that Trickle was down there. Shepard goes back up into Earnhardt, just touches him a little bit and sends him around. And by the way, Dale Earnhardt ended up unofficially in 11th position. He was able to drive the car around. Uh, I think that's right. Okay. Okay. The scoring there, but, uh, but he did drive the car around. You're right. And Mark Martin is in victory lane. So is John Kernan. Well, Mark Martin, instead of drinking the Gatorade, you threw it up in the air. What did you say to your crew when you crossed the line and took the checkered flag? I don't know. Matt 
thought you should have been here, Harley. Man, I just want to thank uh, uh, Cummins and Valvoline and Ford and, and Goodyear for having a great tire, and especially Jack Roush and uh, Steve Mill and these guys. I said, uh, I guess I said they won them one, and thanks. Uh, I'm just real thankful. Can you hardly believe a, a super speedway race, a Ford? And last year, I remember talking to you after coming out of the infield care center after that big crash that is replayed on ESPN every few weeks. Uh, can you believe it? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. With two to go, I thought we'd lost for sure. And, uh, man, it was just great. Right when we caught Dale, uh, or when, when the 24 caught us, we caught him just at the right time to get a big shove. And Dale was putting a block on us, but we were coming. We were going one way or the other. So, uh... It was just perfect, you know, and I thought that I made an adjustment. I didn't make adjustment on the last pit stop that I told him I thought I wanted, and then I changed my mind. I thought it cost us the race. Now, as it turned out, it might have cost us the race if we'd have done it. So I was going to take spoiler off of it, and with spoiler off, I might have been able to handle Dale by myself. But with, with it on there the way it was, I couldn't beat him, and uh, it just worked out just perfect. We're lucky today. Yeah, I think on Friday, as soon as you guys took the car off the truck, as Jack Roush comes in and gives the handshake, the car's been great all weekend for you, hasn't it? It's been a rocket ship. You know what? I see how they do it now. How's that? <laughs> Fast cars. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Martin with the victory, guys. Now, five winners in NASCAR Winston Cup competition so far this year, and let's look at it. There he tries to go on the inside. Earnhardt blocks him. He tries to go to the outside. Earnhardt goes up there, and here comes Mark. And that is a rocket ship, Ned. Yes, sir. He had what he needed right there. And then Jeff Gordon came up there behind him and pushed him right on out in front of Earnhardt. And then here comes Morgan Shepard getting that. His car gets a little bit loose, taps Earnhardt. They get close together and then comes up and taps him again. And that's what spins Earnhardt around. And Morgan goes on by. And Earnhardt almost got this thing going right there. Almost got it going again, but he comes up and just brushes the wall with the nose of the car. And we'll change our statistic to 21st for an Earnhardt. Jerry? Dale, walking along here, what a wild scramble at the end. What happened? Got wrecked. <laughs> Did you get a little help up there, Dale, on that next to last lap? I don't know. Watch the replay. <laughs> Obviously very concerned, Dale Earnhardt. Able to smile a little bit, though, as he was able to back the car back up pit road. But uh, from the in-car camera, you can certainly see maybe what happened. Clearly contact between the two drivers that sent Dale Earnhardt spinning and finishing in 21st position when he was going for the win. Well, the Family Channel blimp has the shot of victory lane here this afternoon, occupied by Mark Martin. He's the only driver to post eight top ten finishes in the first nine races this year. He's won here today. Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama has produced another winner. Mark Martin has gone to victory lane here. Finishing second was Jeff Gordon, and third was Morgan Shepard after contact with Dale Earnhardt on the backstretch on the very last lap. And it forced Earnhardt to fall to 21st position as the victory in, uh, as the victory lane celebration continues. Let's go to Bill Weber. And we're here with Morgan Shepard, and Morgan's uh, had a good finish, but he's not smiling. Your thoughts on the last few laps there? Well, I don't ever like to feel like that. I took somebody out, you know, but uh, uh, we went off into turn one, and uh, I was going up under Earnhardt, and uh, the 15 car, you know, I thought was going to stay be uh, behind me, and uh, I draft right on by, but uh, he pulled down on the inside, and whenever he did, it put us three abreast and made my car real loose, and I got up into Earnhardt then and, and uh, caused him to spin. I hate that. Uh, but Sitco Thunderbird had a good run today other than that. But you did have a good run and a third place finish, and I know that that will make you feel a little better as the evening goes along. Well, we struggled all day long. We lost first gear early, and we couldn't get out of the pits, and we would get way behind at the start, and uh, and then we'd have to work our way up through there. So uh, uh, we hated to see the green flag stops uh, because uh, we would get so far behind. Well, Morgan's happy with his finish, but disappointed about how he got there. Let's go back upstairs. All right. Our congratulations to uh, Morgan Shepard on the third-place finish. 
Mm, man. And Dr. Jerry Punch is now with our fourth place finisher, Darrell Waltrip. DW, what an effort today, man. From 21st, uh, back up finishing in fourth spot. Great run. It was, Jerry. Uh, I can't say enough about my crew. You know, I know all of us rave about our crews, but good pit work today and a real good race car. And uh, thank God for a safe day. And uh, thank God for Western Auto and everybody that's involved. I mean, I thought it was a neat race. Nobody had anything serious happen, some spin outs, but overall I thought it was a pretty neat race. You came in, topped off that one time, came back out 23 cars from the front, and four laps later you're leading. Man, what happened? Well, we had lost a piece of tape off the grill uh, some, through some of that tight running. They put that tape back on. It woke. It gave that thing a wake-up call. But uh, maybe I need to come in and put another piece on it because it went like a rocket at that point. But then I got shook out of the draft, and I just got to say, you know, I got to earn my respect. I got to earn my way back up there with uh, Jeff and Mark and some of them. I haven't raced with them boys on the Daytona and Talladega racetrack. So I got to prove to them what I can do. And they're not cutting me a lot of slack. They're not saying, hey, there's DW, let him in. They're saying, hey, there's DW, he'll let us in. And, you know, we just got to get our, we got to get our nose back in there and let them know we'll race them hard. We let them in a lot, but uh, we'll, we'll race them hard. Two weeks in a row, the DW of old. Now, Benny just asked me, said, hey, will you forgive him for saying you're the guy that tapped 18 last week and you weren't? I'll have to check with Bobby Labonte about that. <laughs> <laughs> Darrell Walter finishes fourth today, Bob. Benny said that when Darrell called him and called him Ben, he knew he was in trouble. Darrell Walter finishes fourth here today. Mark Martin is your winner. We take you back one year ago here in the Winston Select 500 as you ride with Mark Martin. This ought to be a real shot. Off of one wall, through another guardrail, across a road, and into another one. Now, here's the last lap today as Mark got the lead from Dale Earnhardt. They're coming down through the travel for the white flag, signifying one lap to go. Right. Uh, now, they got the white flag. One lap to go. Jeff Gordon goes with it, puts Earnhardt back to third, and Morgan Shepard tries to go and watch this. You can see Morgan wiggle there. Got him out of shape enough to just slightly touch Dale Earnhardt and send him spinning. So Dale Earnhardt finishes unofficially 21st. Mark Martin, however, is the winner here today. John Kernan is with second place finisher Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon and his entourage of media followers are all crowded around here in the garage area. Jeff, a great victory for you. Have you said thank you to Sterling Marlin for pulling you up there? Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I had to go over and thank him. We we haven't always agreed on everything in the past, but, uh, you know, he, he's been working with me. I've been working with him the last uh, few races, pretty much all this, all this season, and uh, he really helped me out today. And, I mean, Morgan... Uh, and the 15 was a lap car that helped us out also. So, uh, you know, those four cars helped us get up to the front. I, I thought our chances were over with about 10, 15 to go. And all of a sudden, with five to go, man, we start reeling them in. Now, I said victory. What I meant, points, I believe. If all the calculations I'm hearing, you and Earnhardt uh, are tied for the points lead right now. Oh, well, that, that, that's fine and dandy. That's great. But, uh, you know, it's very early in the season. I, I mean, I, I can be excited about that. But, uh, you know, I don't want to get focused on that and, and, and lose track. And that's a lot of pressure. I mean, uh, you know, nobody has uh, taken that, that title away from him in a long time. And uh, I'm sure he wouldn't know what, what, to, what to feel like uh, without that title. So, uh, you know, we're trying, but we're just trying to be consistent. We've done that the last four or five races. It's paid off for us. That DuPont Chevrolet has been on victory lane, uh, you know, already three times. But they've finished second and third quite a few times now, too. Uh, seems like we've gotten that bad luck streak out of the way, knock on wood. And uh, Earnhardt's having some right now. But, you know, it, that goes round and round just like the Ford Chevy battle. Now, do you know you know about the $100,000 bonus if you're leading in? I guess if you two are, in fact, tied, you got more wins. So uh, that, that should be your money to pocket, I guess. Well, R.J. Reynolds does a whole lot for this sport, and uh, I think we lose track of that sometimes. And, uh, you know, I mean, the millions that they put into the whole championship plus, you know, adding the, that $100,000 bonus, that, that's great. So if we win it or if we don't win it, it's still a great thing that they do for the sport. Yeah, I, t I tell you what, the last time I told somebody they had won something, Kyle said he needed it from a higher authority at Watkins. But I think Jeff's going to have to wait for higher authority here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, All right. Jeff finishes second. Mark Martin is your winner. We'll be back with the rundown and points at a moment. 
Welcome back to Talladega, and the Winston Select 500 is over. Here's the unofficial rundown of where everybody finished, several recording their best finish of the year, including, of course, Mark Martin, who won. Morgan Shepard has hit, had his best, best finish, as did Bill Elliott, Jeff Bodine, also the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer, and the 19 car. Man, what a race. This Was this exciting? 180, 500 miles, and there was not any boring parts at all. And we didn't have any major crashes today. That yep. was good. And just some good, hard racing all day long. This, by the way, is a very unofficial rundown. NASCAR is checking the scoring to make sure that everything is proper. There's the overhead shot of Victory Lane with Mark Martin, and here are the unofficial points now. Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon tied, and because Jeff Gordon has the most victories, he would win the $100,000. Martin, Marlin, and Musgrave complete the top five. Then six through ten would be Wallace, Jarrett, Hamilton, Shepard, and Waltrip. And 11 through 15, Labonte, Labonte, Elliott, Waltrip, and Grissom. Coming up next here on ESPN, at the conclusion hour telecast in about ten minutes, Shop Talk with Dale Earnhardt. That's coming up next here on ESPN. The man who started it all today, the pole sitter, Terry Labonte. And Terry, a wild scramble at the end, but two laps to go, you had a problem. What happened? Well, uh, the car got loose coming off a of four, and I was trying to pass uh, Daryl and Bobby for a, for a position there. Just got away from me, and uh, been good all day, and just the way it goes. I want to say hi to Papa Joe Hendrick. He's not feeling good today. We wish him well. See you next week. You had a car, but looked like you lost the lead draft after a couple of pit stops. That had to hurt you. It did. We got hung up in traffic a little bit there, and, and the lead pack checked out on us, and... Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those deals, but uh, our, our Kellogg Chevrolet was good. The guys did a great job. Terry finished 24th today. Now, younger brother Bobby fared a little better. He's with our Bill Weber. Well, we got the coach and the quarterback here. First, let's talk to Bobby Labonte, fifth place finish. I think that's your third, uh, fourth top ten, I believe, this year. Congratulations. Yeah, I tell you what, we're, uh, we're awful tickled. You know, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet ran good all day. Just didn't seem like we had enough uh, to lead the uh, pack of cars, but we could draft real good. And uh, Darrell got by us there with about seven, uh, six, seven to go, whatever it was. And was able to follow him and uh, hold off Bill. You know, really wanted to make a run on Darrell at the end. And, you know, Bill was going to follow us. But... Uh, uh, you know, the interstate car just wouldn't, couldn't quite get him, but, you know, it's just uh, one of those restrictor plate days. You know, you just race all day and get to the last lap. Past 100 cars during the day, but you don't get past nobody at the end. <laughs> well, Joe Gibbs, I know you're high on this driver and the success of your team. You bet. Uh, Bobby hasn't thrown many interceptions lately. <laughs> yeah, I think he got the most out of this car today, and we're thrilled with that. Hey, it's a natural match here, I think, and uh, we're thrilled to death to have Bobby wheeling that thing. And, hey, so far, everything the first part of the year for us, I couldn't have hoped for any more than this. Interstate Batteries comes home fifth. Bobby Labonte and Joe Gibbs. Mark Martin, the big winner of the Winston Select 500. Back with more in just a moment. Yeah. Wins here today, but look at the quest for the cup point standings. Unofficially, Earnhardt and Jeff are tied. Jeff wins the 100,000 because he's won the most races. Is that unbelievable? Boy, After 10 races, we're tied. I think we're going to have a battle right down to then. Can you imagine what it's going to be like at Atlanta? <laughs> Man. All right, we still have more from here at Talladega, and don't forget, coming up next, Shop Talk with Dale Earnhardt. When a 3,400-pound race car locks it up and slides sideways at 190 miles per hour, well, here's what happens to those Goodyear tires. Take a look at Earnhardt's left rear and left front. They are just ripped to shreds, just torn apart. The outside is completely gone. The inner liner has been shredded and a large hole inside. Earnhardt was lucky to keep the car on the ground. Bob? And that is what happened to Dale Earnhardt. We're going to show you the unofficial rundown of where everybody finished today. 21 cars were in the lead lap, a Talladega record, the previous record 19, and the average speed 178.9, a record for Talladega since restricted racing was instituted here at Talladega and at Daytona. Good run for Mike Wallace, finishing one lap down, 23rd. The winner yesterday, the ARCA race. Shop Talk is coming up next with Dale Earnhardt. A week from today at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, we'll be at Sears Point Raceway near Sonoma, California for the NASCAR Winston Cup race there. This yep. is what happened on the last lap as Morgan Shepard spun Dale Earnhardt, relishing him to a 21st place finish. My thanks to Dale Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Jerry Punch, John Kernan, and Bill Weber. The winner of the Winston Select 500 is Mark Martin. We'll see you next Sunday from Sonoma, California. This is...